Okay. Good to go. Great. Um, so uh, welcome everybody to today's August 11th Complete Streets Commission meeting. This is a teleconference meeting with the Complete Streets Commission members, city staff, and members of the public participating remotely to ensure proper social distancing in this federal, state, and local emergency. Um, I want to introduce Complete Streets Commission members and staff present. I'm Chair Adina Levin, and Commissioner President include, present includes Brian Altman, Katie Baruzzi, Jackie Sebrian, Sally Cole, uh, J.K. Jensen, Elizabeth King, and Lydia Lee, with John Cromie being absent at the moment, and staff present include Kevin Chen and Patrick Palmer. Um, so Patrick, can you please provide the instructions to the Complete Streets Commission and members of the public on how the meeting will proceed from here? Yes, uh, thank you, Chair Levin and members of the Complete Streets Commission. Welcome everyone to the August 11th Complete Streets Commission meeting and thank you for attending. Uh, at this time, we ask that the members of the commission please remain on screen for the duration of the meeting. You will control your own webcams and microphones. Staff will engage webcams and microphones to make presentations and respond to the members of the commission. For members of the public who are in attendance and you wish to provide a public comment, after the chair calls for public comment on the item you wish to speak on, please engage the raised hand feature. I will then have the ability to open your microphone and you can provide your public comment to the commission. Uh, for members of the public who are calling in from a landline or a cell phone, you can press star nine to raise your hand uh, and then I will be able to unmute your microphone. That concludes the instructions and I return the meeting to the chair. All right, um, so thank you very much. So uh, we are moving on to item C, reports and announcements, where under reports and announcements, staff and commission members may communicate general information of interest regarding matters within the jurisdiction of the commission. Um, no commission discussion or action can occur on any of the presented items. Um, uh, so uh, does staff have reports and announcements uh, to present? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so this is one of the special occasions uh, where I actually have no uh, updates for you uh, from the city council side of things. So I guess I will, before I conclude, uh, announce that the, um, the Senate has uh, passed the federal in infrastructure bill. So as many of you might remember, the bill does have a tie in to us because uh, there is some funding attached to it for the Middle Avenue pet and bike crossing, um, rail crossing. So good news that is passed the Senate and, and uh, the next step is to go to the house. So uh, fingers crossed. And with that, I will uh, conclude my announcements. Thank you. Um, so uh, I have a question. Um, so I uh, <laughs> was just watching a AC Transit agenda item on a Dumbarton Forward where I learned some updates about that project. And I can present um, here or in a subcommittee report. Uh, staff, where should I share that thing that I just learned uh, a few minutes ago? Uh, thank you. I would, uh, let's do that through the uh, subcommittee report. Yeah, fantastic. Um, okay. And um, we will now move on to a general public comment under which the public may address the Complete Streets Commission on any subject that is not listed on the agenda. Each speaker may address the commission once under public comment for a limit of up to three minutes. Please clearly state your name and address or political jurisdiction in which you live. The commission cannot act on items not listed on the agenda and therefore the commission cannot respond to non agendized items brought up under public comment other than to provide general information um, uh, Patrick do we have any public comment. It does not look like we do i'd like to just quickly remind the public that if you do have a comment, you can just raise your virtual hand uh, and then you'll be able to speak. Okay. But at this time, it does not look like it. All right, uh, thank you very much. So we will start to move on to regular business where under regular business, the commission considers recommendations from city staff on policy matters or administrative actions that require commission approval. And uh, the first item under E1 is to approve the Complete Streets Commission regular meeting minutes of July 14th, 2021. Are there any uh, clarifications from the commission um, on the minutes before taking any public comments on the minutes. All right. 
Um, not go back and look here. I don't see any hands from commissioners. Um, any public comments on the minutes? Um, if not, any a motion? Uh, a motion on the minutes? I, uh, I'll Jack, to approve. I'll second, Sally. All right. So I have Commissioner Cibrian, the motion, and Vice Chair Co. Second, so if I can have everyone that would like to present a yes vote to please raise your hand. Uh, great, I believe. And then Commissioner Beruzzi, King, and Lee would be abstained from this. Uh, great, I think that's unanimous. Great. Thank you. All right, excellent. So we can now move on to the next item on the agenda, which is uh, to get a presentation on the uh, Bellhaven Neighborhood Traffic Management Plan. And we will hear from Kevin Chen, Senior Transportation Engineer. Great, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, if you don't mind, just give me a couple minutes as I pull up my presentation. Apologize. <clears throat> Having a bit of a technical difficulty here. There we go. So that's the right one. Okay. If I can just have a confirmation that you are seeing uh, the cover page of tonight's presentation. Awesome. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, so good evening, Council. Uh, Commissioners, uh, Kevin Chan, Senior Transportation Engineer. So tonight's item uh, presenting to be before you is the Belhaven Neighborhood Traffic Calming Plan. Um, I know many of you are probably new to this, so I'll probably spend a little bit of time discussing the background um, of the project, uh, some of the progress that's been made since then, and of course, uh, final recommendation. Uh, but tonight's item is specifically to uh, recommend the permanent installation which is essentially, if you will, the last stage uh, or second to the last stage of, of this project. Um, so with that being said, I will go ahead and uh, start the presentation. So here is just a quick agenda for tonight. As I mentioned earlier, I'll spend a few minutes talking about the plan itself, uh, some of the histories behind it, uh, followed by uh, sharing what the current plan is, of course, there's many iterations that have been um, since the approval back in 2018. Uh, so I'm gonna focus on the current plan, but of course, definitely welcome any questions that commissioners might have about the pro progression of the plan for the last couple of years or so. Um, <clears throat> followed by some of the, the, the latest data collection and survey results uh, that led to tonight's recommendation and of course a, uh, a quick slide of the next steps so that everyone's on the same page as to what we need to do following tonight's meeting. Uh, the image to your right here is just a little quick image snapshot of where the Bahaven neighborhood is relative to the city. Uh, it's uh, essentially near the, the east side um, uh, of Menlo Park uh, fronting Willow, uh, the railroad track at the 101. Also uh, here is just a, a quick snapshot of the plan itself. Uh, I do want to start the presentation by just kind of discussing why we're doing this plan. So as the name uh, mentioned, it's Belhaven Trump Common Plan. So the plan, the intent of the plan is to really reduce with the hope of reducing cut through traffic. And of course, we're talking about pandemic, pre-pandemic time. Uh, back then there was a lot of traffic along Bayfront and Willow. And of course, uh, with traffic comes some cut through traffic to the neighborhood, especially from some of the, the business around the area. So as a result of that, uh, we, the city, uh, with collaboration with Facebook, uh, initiated a plan. Uh, the plan is called about Haven Traffic Common Plan. Uh, again, with the goal of hopefully coming up with some measures to deter cut through traffic. So here's a, a quick snapshot of all 
all the all the milestone dates uh, from the inception of the study to the actual study itself to the approval and, and later on we'll, we'll go over kind of the current status uh, of everything else. Uh, before I change the next slide, I do want to at least emphasize that based on the, the study thus far, we have established that there are cut through traffics in the neighborhood, and then that goes without saying. And the cut through routes, based on the data that was collected back, back in 2017, was uh, Choco, Ivy, and Newbridge. And the, the, the reason how we came to that conclusion was we actually had someone do a, a what we call an origin and destination study, which essentially is writing down the last three or four digits of a license plate. Uh, at the at each of the, the neighborhood gates, and if a if a license plate let's say occurs uh, appears on Choco, and then later on also appears on Newbridge, then chances are that's a vehicle that really just cut through the traffic, cut through the neighborhood using Choco and Newbridge. So that's how we determine the the exact cut through routes within the neighborhood, and of course with the focus being on those cut through routes only. And of course, with that, uh, several measures were, were developed uh, with several meetings with, between the Completion Commission, the City Council, some of the public meetings, and even public events that, that we uh, went out and, and made sure that we get solicit uh, resident feedback. And as I mentioned before, several iterations of the plan have occurred. And what's in front of you right now is essentially sort of the latest version uh, with additional comments that we have received from the SFPUC, which covers the area in sort of the green, and also from Caltrans, which has covered the area that's uh, the red area. Uh, the purple area indicates uh, that they are measures within the city right away, uh, meaning we have full control over. Uh, the green and the red uh, means they're controlled by those jurisdictions. So an application would need to be um, completed with some, some design elements already developed uh, in order for them to, to conduct their reviews. And I'll talk about that a little bit briefly as well. But really the, the, tip, the main takeaway I, I want the commission to, to have here is just a, a quick snapshot of the, of the plan, the current plan status, and some of the jurisdictions and the right of ways that are being deviated because it does have something, it does um, have some, Thing to do with the implementation plan as we have outlined in the staff report. Uh, and just a quick highlight, you know, uh, really we're talking about uh, striping. Uh, primarily, <clears throat> the, the, prim the primary recommendation here, as you see, are uh, the installation of bulb outs. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, with IV also having two uh, raised intersections as, as one of the recommendations. So. Um, many, many um, civil, civil elements went into this uh, as well. So again, if there's any interest in knowing the progression, uh, we'll definitely be able to go over that. Okay, uh, so starting from this point on, I'm gonna quickly go through the slides. I have about 19 or 20 of them. So I'm gonna try to go through them as fast as I could, um, and then we can open up for questions. Uh, here is just a, a quick snapshot of the existing traffic controls out there, uh, the little yellow, lines are uh, speed humps. So you can see that there are quite a few speed humps already in the neighborhood. <clears throat> the other thing that I wanted to kind of highlight are the turn restrictions that we have installed. So I, if you can draw your attention to the blue boxes, those are turn restrictions that are currently out there. Uh, they typically represent uh, a PM restriction uh, as the, the legend indicates, typically 3.30 to seven o'clock. And that's really, it was, in, it was put in with the primary purpose of uh, eliminate, or hopefully eliminating or reducing the, the cut through traffic. So definitely, um, as I later on noticed in the staff report, uh, there are definitely some feedbacks about sort of the inconvenience that these term restrictions have created for the neighborhood as well. Also, I wanted to kind of spend a few seconds just talking about this. Uh, this is uh, essentially the, the implementation process uh, that we have changed due to the COVID-19. Uh, there's two rows here. The row to the left is what we would consider sort of the typical process that we would have gone through 
if uh, COVID didn't exist at this time. And then the one to the right was uh, sort of the, the reimagining of the process due to COVID-19. Uh, the reason why I highlighted only these four and sort of not including the previous ones is because they have been completed, but of course the exhibit there's an appendix in the staff report that highlights the, the, the entirety of the process. Uh, the reason why I wanted to highlight this is because we, uh, we, I wanted to highlight the fact that due to the trial installation, uh, we, we had originally wanted to conduct a, a post follow-up survey as well as data collection to, to further identify whether or not those uh, trial measures were effective against uh, cut through traffic, but of course, as you all know, and, and as I mentioned in the staff report, that no longer is the case. However, we did spend some time still collecting the data, and then we spend mo a majority of our time uh, getting the surveys and uh, diving into the surveys uh, with the idea of uh, coming up with a recommendation based on those results. <clears throat> Uh, so the next couple of slides are just a quick image of the data collection and then just a, a quick uh, snapshot of what we've seen thus far. So here is an image of the railway data collection. Typically, when it comes to railway, it's 24 hours. We collect uh, data cars for both directions. In this case, we also collected uh, speed data uh, just because we wanted to see what, what kind of change we have seen in terms of speed. And as you can see here, Definitely seeing some reduction across the board for volume, and that's you know, not surprising. The data is were collected back in April of this year. Um, and then, of course, with the speed, we're not seeing a dramatic increase or decrease of speed in this case, uh, typically plus minus uh, two miles per hour or less. And this, are, this is basically a representation of 2017 data compared to 2021 data. Here's a snapshot of also intersections that we collected. Uh, typically, when it comes to intersection collect data collections, we collect the AM and PM peak hours. So AM would be 7 AM to 9 AM, and then PM would be 4 PM to 6 PM. And typically, we would collect both uh, vehicle, uh, bicycle, and also pedestrian data. A, a fairly common practice when it comes to intersection data collection. And of course, to no one's surprise, we're also seeing a, uh, a, a range of reduction uh, to both, to all, to both uh, vehicle, pedestrian, and bike. Okay, <clears throat> so I do want to spend a, a, a few more minutes talking about the survey, but I want to start by uh, talking about how the survey was collected. So as I mentioned before, staff prepared a, a package of the survey really with two ideas in mind. One is to get a broad sense of their view of the plan itself. And then the second half focusing on some of the specific measures that have been installed and getting their opinions. So that way we can use those opinions to help form our recommendations at the very end. So a survey was prepared <clears throat> with images and uh, some multiple choice, some open-ended questions. The, the entirety of the survey uh, has been attached as part of the attachment, so feel free to reference that as well. Generally speaking, we're looking at <clears throat> about 94 responses, and this is from a survey that was posted by end of June to almost end of July, so there's a, a three to four week of an open period. Uh, the package contains uh, surveys in both Spanish and English uh, with a link to an online survey is the exact same survey, but just online so that it's easier for people to post uh, their responses. Also, there were contact information from staff so that if they wanted to call or email that they could. Um, it, it, uh, there's a, I, I, there's a, based on those responses, we essentially collected 94 um, unique responses, 45 of them from the paper survey, 47 online, one phone call and one email. And here is a quick snapshot of those uh, survey responders. Uh, we wanted to see if they were uh, renters, owners, or uh, if they're from the neighborhood, or if they live outside of the neighborhood. Also just a general awareness of, this, of the plan itself. Uh, even though we have done quite extensive amount of outreach, um, it's, it's never 100%. So we were hoping that this survey in addition to collecting all the uh, information, it's also a good way to let some of those people that are unaware of it to know that, hey, there's this plan that's in existence. 
here are just some numbers representing sort of the, the view of the responders. I'm so sorry to stop you at Sally. Okay. I, yes. tried to, I tried to raise my hand, but I don't know if it worked. Um, but on the slide before, when you're talking about the survey respondents, mm -hmm. um, I had just two questions. The second bullet point there says neighborhood residents, businesses, 65 percent yes so is it 65 percent residents you know what i mean i wasn't sure what the yes, yes was to no sorry so the yes means if they uh if their business or if their residency is within the Belhaven neighborhood so really the question was whether or not they live in the neighborhood or if they live outside somewhere else Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Um, and then also, I just was curious what your perspective was on, is this a, is this a pretty healthy re survey response based on other comparisons? <laughs> Mathematically speaking, probably not. Uh, we send out okay. including renters, owners, owners that own the property that doesn't live there, uh, owner that own the property and lives there, uh, business owners, land owners. I think we send out close to a little over 1500 surveys. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So just all males. Of course, we got some bounce backs, but that, that's a, a really small, small size. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. What, why are you there? What's, what's the population in that area? Just roughly? So, uh, roughly. Yes. Right. So, so based on the, based on the, of course, I don't know exactly how sure. many, but um, yeah, so based on the survey, it would, it, I would say probably close to, uh, between 1,700 to 2,000, and that's based on just the number of surveys that we send out. In terms of how many per, per household, I, we don't have that information. Okay, and then I'm, the neighborhood residents and businesses, I'm still a little bit confused about that. 65% of the people were neighborhood residences and businesses? Yeah, exactly. That so, means they either live there or they work, they own the business they, um, in, the, in the neighborhood. So the 35 percent, how, how did they get surveyed if they didn't live in the area? So it, it could be that they maybe own the property, but they don't live there. Oh, uh, I see. So, they, they could be so like they're a landlord or something. They're, exactly, they're rent. So if they're a landlord, that's not a business. Right. Exactly. Of course, um, this this represents confirmed uh, neighbor neighbors and, and residents, right? So some business, some resident might not feel comfortable expressing that. Uh, so we have no idea. So <laughs> part part of the thirty five percent, a majority of it, just no response. Thank you. Okay, great. Uh, so so in light of um, sort of the timing, I'm just gonna go ahead and um, I quickly scan those slides. The information is in the staff report, so hopefully you, you had a chance to, to read through them. <clears throat> um, base. Oh, sorry. Uh, basically, in terms of whether or not there is a, um, a, a cut through traffic, I think, I think there's an overwhelming yes to that question. Uh, whether or not the, um, the plans thus far provides a positive or negative impact, definitely uh, it's 57% believes that it's providing a positive feedback. Um, of course, there's a, a question about the turn restrictions. And as, as, as you can see, it is impacting some of the residents. and. Definitely some frustrations were uh, expressed in the survey as well. Uh, just overall general circulation, there's 51% uh, expressed a, a benefit to it. And in this case, uh, we kind of kept it broad. So it, it could be a, a benefit for both vehicles. So in terms of, you know, do they see a reduction in, in speed or maybe a circulation in terms of uh, pen and bike as well, if they're seeing a, a better circulation for, for, for them as well. So. A uh, fairly general question right there. <clears throat> and here are just some of the, uh, the responses that raised to the top uh, as to why, why they support or they uh, oppose the plan. Uh, so again, I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, go move on to the next one because the table is available in the second floor as well. Uh, yeah, okay. can, can, can you, sorry, sorry, can you please yeah. um, uh, return to the previous slide? I wanna be able to uh, read that just for another second in here. Okay, sure. Um, yeah, well, I can I can talk about that a little bit. You know, for those that support, obviously, it's raising awareness, and those are typically referring to the bow belts. As you, if you're driven by the area, you'll notice that the bow belts currently uh, consist of paint and uh, those flexible ballers, kind of 
stubby and short uh, ball, ballers. And that, that represents where the future bobat would be. So if you're driving around the area, you'll see that it's a little bit further out. And that's because if, if we do go ahead and put in a permanent, uh, that's where the, the, uh, the, the line of the, the curve would be. So it's definitely raising some awareness. Um, people felt like there was a few traffic violations. Some, some people definitely felt like there's some reduction in speed, and then particularly with the speed limit signs on Choco, which I'll go over uh, in a little bit. Uh, generally, there's an increase in pedestrian safety. And of course, on the, the, op the opposite end, uh, people were feeling some frustration with, with the term restriction. Um, also, that we really need to uh, address the development around the area. Uh, because that's a, a, a really a primary uh, a driving force behind this study as well. And of course, uh, being that it's COVID time, some people express uh, that it's difficult to attribute uh, any benefits, uh, for instance, uh, the, the bond reduction to the plan, uh, which, which is a very much a fair point. And, and of course, some people are, are just not in favor of the bulb out and would rather see those resources for, uh, be spent elsewhere. And, Police enforcement is actually the one that came up quite a bit as well. Okay, so as I mentioned before, the survey consists of a kind of a general component, which we just talked about, and then also a specific component, which is uh, what we're gonna talk about next. Uh, so as you will see for the next few slides or so, we're gonna talk about some of the specific measures, some of the survey responses that we got from them, and of course, ultimately the, the final recommendation will be revolving uh, those recommendations as well. So each slide, you will see uh, an image of the measure as well as sort of the approximate location relative to the entirety of the plan. So first and foremost, uh, the speed limit signs. And so those are the signs that you, if you drive down the, the neighborhood, even the city actually, you'll see that it changes the speed, it measures how fast you're driving. So we install a couple of those along Choco between Hamilton and Ivy. And of course, we wanted to know how people felt about that measure, whether or not it was effective. Generally speaking, we have about 4% of people say they actually saw an increase in speed. 24% uh, saw a decrease, and the majority of them actually uh, didn't see any changes. And so uh, with that being said, we, def we, we are at least um, pleased to see that at least 24% of the people felt like there was a decrease in speed, which um, while it's not as high as we would like it to be, uh, is definitely towards the positive. Uh, also, we spend quite a bit of time and uh, quite a few questions uh, along the bulb out component, as because as you can see from the image, uh, that a lot of the corner bulb outs are being, uh, rep uh, being proposed here along Choco, Ivy, um, New Bridge, and, and Terminal as well. So we wanted to we put a lot of focus into that particular question. Uh, generally speaking, the questions revolving are you know, whether or not you would like to see it be permanently uh, converted to a permanent feature. Generally, we have about 52% support, 32% uh, opposed. And, and again, you, you generally see a pattern in terms of why they support it or why they oppose uh, this. And, and support generally means there's aware, awareness, it's a, high, a heightened awareness. People do feel safer uh, as they uh, cross the street. Uh, in terms of cars, people felt like they, it gives them awareness because they, they have to make it a turn a little bit slower. So uh, it, it gives them a little bit of awareness. Of course, the, for those people that oppose, they're not seeing a lot of benefits in terms of the true speed. And, and I think that our survey sort of actually indicated that because we didn't see a reduction of uh, through speed reduction, uh, through speed reduction there. Um, of course, there are also some oppositions because now we have to uh, make the turn a little bit tighter uh, the streets are, are fairly, uh, they're not on the wider side, but they are not on the narrow side either. So with the bow bus, if they do make the, uh, and particularly those right turn vehicles, having to turn a little bit slower. Uh, and, and of course, what that means is that, you know, uh, sometimes you, we do see some scarf marks as uh, the second question indicated. And that typically means, you know, maybe it's a not a collision, but a brush or a, a touch of a, a, either a car or maybe a bike. Uh, on those bulb outs, uh, on those temporary bulb outs. So of course that naturally leads to our second question, which is, you know, in order to sort of come back that scar mark, which is an indication that it's being collided either by cars or bikes, 
um, when we do the permanent installation, what should we focus on? And, and of course, with the different various focus, the design would change slightly as well. So we wanted to get a sense of that. And 57% uh, of the uh, responders indicated that they would prefer to see the design gear more towards pedestrian access and safety, uh, while about 22% uh, indicate that we prefer the design be focused on vehicular access and maneuverability. Uh, I do wanna say that within those 22%, uh, of course, there are people that oppose the, the, the plan to begin with, but they still decided to to respond, uh, recognizing that uh, you know, they, they still want their voice to be heard in this case. And, and finally, the sort of the, the design of the boba itself. So like I mentioned before, right now, what's out there sort of represents the edge curve of the bulbouts. And with bulbouts, there are traditional bulbout designs and a detached. And here are sort of the images of each right there below that you can see. Um, you know, obviously, aesthetically, they, they both present a, a, different, a different viewpoint uh, based on, on your, your view. I, I will say that with the detached, you typically have that detached uh, because there's some sort of a drainage issue um, or there are some design constraints that really prevents you from doing the traditional. Um, ideally, we always want to kind of go with the traditional. It's a little bit more, um, there's more areas for the pedestrians to, to walk on. Generally, uh, depending on your point of view, you, you might see it as a, a better, uh, aesthetically more pleasing than the detached. Uh, but with the detached, it does afford us the ability of um, not to have to change the, the drainage that much, which typically is you know, a, a fairly costly item as well and, and really presents from a civil engineering of a really high, a big challenge. So we wanted to um, use a survey to see if there's any preference over one or the other. And um, with the survey, we essentially got a uh, almost a 50-50 50, 50, uh, response. And there are definitely people that prefer one over the other. Uh, there are some that, that express um, you know, no opinion. Uh, towards one or the other. So generally we sort of skip those votes as well. Uh, but generally at the end of the day, we are seeing sort of a 50, almost a 50-50 split between the traditional and the detached. Uh, also there's some gateway treatments. Uh, I just wanted to kind of show this image so that you guys know what the gateways are. Um, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and toggle back a little bit. So there's a couple gateways down over by Willow and Newbridge on that lower right corner. Uh, it, it's really a way for us to, when, for us to, um, to showcase the neighborhood as you're driving into the neighborhood. It's, it's not necessarily a traffic calming presence, but it, do, it does allow us the opportunity to say, okay, you're driving into a neighborhood now. That's hopefully you are um, driving with caution, you're driving uh, safely as well. So I just wanted to kind of share the image uh, for those new commissioners that might have not seen this before, what they approximately would look like um, in the future. And here, I just wanted to kind of quickly highlight some of the supports and oppositions. Uh, and again, I've sort of mentioned those already, so I'm gonna quickly kind of move on to the next slides, but spend a couple of seconds here. Um, the, the same table is also available in the staff report. So if you have that in front of you, um, it's, it's right there as well. Uh, finally, I do want to talk about Ivy and then followed by the Willow, uh, the intersection of Willow and, and uh, Newbridge as, as well. So like I mentioned, Ivy Drive belongs to uh, the SFPUC. So we're currently working with them with some design elements, uh, but I do want to kind of showcase what is being available here. Uh, we have a couple of race intersections, which are, are a fairly uh, significant elements. I, I don't believe we have any race intersections in the city yet. So if, if this is a, uh, a go from the PUC, this would be our, our first couple. Uh, very excited to, to have those installed. Uh, also, we would like to see a lot more crosswalks being available. Uh, if you walk up and down Ivy or if you're driven by Ivy, you, you barely see any crosswalks. And with schools being so close by, a lot of kids are walking. We wanted to take this opportunity to put in some crosswalks um, and indicate some right of ways for, for the pedestrians and then wherever possible, put in some nose islands uh, so that they, would, they feel more protected. Um, the, 
if you're driven down IB, you'll notice that there's a, a really wide median island there. And, and the reason why there's nothing on top of it is because there are three uh, SFPUC pipelines down there. So unfortunately, there's not much we can do there, but we, we could open it up, get a couple of those islands, um, those medians to kind of protect those pedestrians a little bit. So wanted to kind of highlight those. It's something that's ongoing. So we wanted to make sure that the, the neighborhood feel uh, comfortable moving this forward because the process is a bit longer because we don't have the right away. So we got to go through the entire process. So the question to them was uh, whether or not they would support a permanent installation because if you do get the okay from the PUC, our current intention is that we would not go out and do any temporary as we would with the secret right away. We will use the results now and uh, move forward with permanent installation. Mm -hmm. uh, I see that um, oh. Mr. Cole, our Vice Chair Cole has her hand raised. I think that Thank there's you. like two more slides so we can take the question sure. now or take them at the end. Do you wanna jump it in It was now? so quick. It's just, it's just, thank you very much. It's just about the raised intersection. Mm -hmm. Kevin, I'm just curious, are those um, like bumps and is the point of the race in intersection that a car going over it has more vibration and notes that it's an intersection? No, um, so it, it's uh, it, it basically, yeah. It, the, the, the reason why we kind of raise it up is for the transition. Typically it would allow the cars to drive a little bit slower. So if you imagine a speed bump, typically when people okay. see a speed bump, they slow down a little bit, yeah. And, and also, so it's basically kind of that, um, that aspect. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, so <clears throat> before I move on to the uh, sort of the last few slides, I do wanna mention here the Willow and Newbridge a, a, uh, signal improvement. So as some of you might know, this is a intersection, a signal control controlled by Caltrain. So we are also in the process of working through, through their application process. But with this, there are essentially three uh, main improve or uh, main modifications that we would like to, to focus on. The first two are, all of these are based on pre previous feedbacks that we have gathered over the years. Um, but the, so I, I do want to spend a couple, a couple more minutes on the third one uh, specifically, but I will briefly talk about the first one. So the first one is to reverse the signal phase sequence. And as if you're driven by the area, you might know right now, as of now, if you're coming from East Palo Alto, uh, you will get to go first. So East Palo Alto, those cars would go, if you're driving to say 101 in the morning, people from East Palo Alto, they would go out first, followed by the Bell Haven residents. So the, the Bell Haven residents would go next. So as effectively, the first one is to reverse that sequence. And the reason for that reversal is because um, as, as some of you might know, you know, if you're driving in the morning, you want to get to work, uh, some drivers are a little bit more aggressive. So the, the feedback that we got was, you know, those um, people that are coming from East Palo Alto, they typically will squeeze, the, uh, squeeze those yellow seconds and, and, and even sometimes the red. And, and so what ended up being, ha what ended up happening was um, by, by the time that the about Haven folks get to come out, that there's still cars lining up along the intersection. And this intersection actually gets used quite a bit by pedestrians as well. So what ends up happening is that if you imagine you're crossing uh, using the image to the left, if you imagine you're crossing on the south side, you're looking at a lot of cars basically just kind of coming at you, even though you have the, the right of way to go at the time. So, so th this is a, essentially a sequence that we're hoping to reverse uh, and hopefully take care of that that problem in the morning. Uh, the second one is to convert one of the left turns to a protective phase. Uh, right now, there is a, a phase where the left turns are coming from Newbridge. So this is coming out from out of the neighborhood. Uh, they actually go at the same time as pedestrians that are crossing on the north side. So that's not, not an ideal, not an ideal uh, design element in terms of signal and safety. So especially for intersection of this size. So we are taking this opportunity to make it a protective so the cars go first and then the pedestrians can go so that way we eliminate that conflict. And last, so those two elements, the first two elements have more to do with pedestrian safety, if you will. The third element has to do with uh, sort of vehicle to vehicle safety. So in this case, what we're proposing is a, a temporary 
uh, not temporary, I'm sorry, a selected uh, time period where the new bridge coming out of the Belhaven neighborhood would have a no right turn on red sign. And this sign would come on when uh, the northbound Willow folks would make a left turn. And the reason why this sort of came to about was we are, we, we've got some feedback from residents that, you know, a lot of times cars that are making that U-turn, they're actually going into kind of that furnished row where the business are. And of course, if you are coming out of the neighborhood, sometimes you're lining up. So what ends up happening is that sometimes there's a, an opportunity for collision. Those cars that are making a U-turn on, onto the frontage row, they might, be, uh, they might not see a car that's waiting to make a right on New Bridge. So uh, luckily we haven't had a lot of collisions there yet, uh, but it is, uh, not, it's not as safe as it could be. So in this case, we wanted to see if there's a uh, there's a um, an appetite to to have that uh, basically right turn restriction be be uh, be eliminated during that phase and and of course uh, we wanted to ask the, the the residents about this as well. So uh, you know, with, with in terms of the third point, we wanted to see if they're even aware of this, and apparently thirty three only thirty three percent say yes to it. So uh, again, I. We felt like the survey did, did a good job of hopefully highlighting this to, to some, uh, some of the residents that are not aware of this. And I think to no one's surprise, one of the main concerns that we heard through the survey was that this is potentially going to increase queuing, which is already pretty long to begin with. And of course, we're all talking about our sort of pre-pandemic conditions here, um, especially in the morning peak hours where people are leaving their home, trying to get to work. Sometimes the, the queue along Newbridge will go three, four blocks. There's a couple of residents that actually say they have seen it where the queue almost all the way to Choco, which is at least five or six blocks away. And so, and, and I've personally witnessed that myself in the morning as well, where there's quite a few cars. Um, so of course, when, when we sent out the survey, we, we didn't spec spec specify sort of the period, the period where this would, would occur. So because we wanted to make sure we, we capture everyone's opinion and uh, a very uh, overwhelming majority of them expressed this particular concern about the congestion and particularly in the morning as people are, people are leaving their, uh, their home to go to work or go to school. Okay. Um, of course, at the end of the survey, we had an open-ended question. We wanted to take this opportunity to just solicit any feedback that we might, maybe, maybe we might be able to get from the residents. So here are some of them that, that sort of surface to the top. We have quite a few responses. Um, and like and I mentioned earlier, definitely a lot of people want more police enforcement. So this is certainly something that will be forwarding to the police department for their consideration. Uh, some people are asking for more bike lane improvements, and uh, there's a, a long history of why there's no bike lane improvements for this plan. Um, as a matter of fact, we, we started the plan with a couple of bike lanes, but the residents were, um, they, they, they really wanted to preserve their parking along the way, so that, that's why there's no, there's no bike lane improvements for this plan, is due to that particular comment. Uh, there's also a comment about wanting more speed pumps. Uh, for the for the neighborhood because uh, they felt like it's not uh, particularly on the major roadways, uh, and then generally are more improvements for Pierce Road, which uh, we are currently uh, take, taking that into consideration. Uh, to the right, uh, also a few other um, improvements that that residents would like to see. Uh, of course, all of this is currently out of the scope of this project, but we are taking those feedbacks, forwarding them to the appropriate party if that if there is a a department or division that can address that in the, in the short term, but we're collecting all of this so that way in the future when a new project comes in, we'll make sure to, um, to, to incorporate those comments as they come in. Okay, so uh, thank, thanks for hanging in there. So I'm just gonna conclude my presentation with two more slides. So this slide right here is tonight's recommendation. From the, from the commission, uh, really staff is seeking the commission uh, recommendation to the city council for the following items. So in terms of the speed feedback signs, staff is recommending that we retain them uh, because even though we didn't get quite get 51% that we were hoping for, uh, which is sort of the measurement, the criteria right now, 
uh, we are seeing at least uh, more positive than negative. Um, and plus the features are there because in order to have them installed, we have to install them permanently. So definitely recommend that we retain those and we'll continue to, to um, hopefully uh, see some positive improvements there. In terms of the bulb outs and uh, temporary bulb outs and gateways and specifically focusing on the CD right away, uh, we are definitely recommending the, the permanent installation. However, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, there are a, a we, even though we have an overwhelming, not overwhelming, we have a majority of people that want to focus on pedestrian um, maneuverability and safety, there is a 50-50 uh, split between traditional and detached. So we want to take some more time to explore the design options. As I mentioned before, uh, it really comes down to sort of the engineering uh, of, of, the, of each of the options and of course cost, the associated cost as well. So we are currently asking for your recommendation to move it forward. However, we will continue to have the dialogue with the consultant to see what, what the design constraints are. And hopefully when we come to uh, the final design, we'll be able to have a, a, a good, good selection there. In terms of the IV drive, uh, we're definitely recommending the, um, the permanent installation as we work, continue to work with the F SFPUC on this matter. Uh, in terms of the bulb out, we'll take the same approach. Uh, we'll look at the, the design constraints along IB and then hopefully come up with a, a design element that is ideally suited for, for that particular street. In terms of the Willow and New Bridge, so that's the signal modifications, definitely recommending that we move forward with all three uh, modifications with the uh, exception of the third one because of the, the amount of feedback that we got uh, about sort of the concern of queuing in the morning, particularly in the morning. Our recommendation is for the time being to start those, uh, start that term restriction on the weekdays between 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. So this is, uh, again, your typical p.m. peak hour during the weekdays. So what that means is that that's the only time period that uh, the no right turn on red will come on. Um, and we'll use this as sort of a case study to see how uh, the, the sort of the, the queuing effect that you would have at least on the PM peak hour, and then hopefully using that data uh, to potentially see if we have the opportunity to expand that in the future. But for the time being, we're recommending a weekday from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Okay, so the last slide. Uh, so tonight we're looking for any, any feedback from the commission. Uh, on this item, and then hopefully with your feedback, we'll go ahead and, and incorporate them to the extent possible. And then we're looking to go to the city council for the final approval in September, so basically next month. Mm -hmm. So with that, I will conclude our presentation and open for questions. Thank All you. right. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you very much. This is a, a certainly a very uh, a robust presentation, and we'll start with a round of questions. Um, so Commissioner Lee. Oh, okay, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay, so Kevin, I have talked to you about this before, but um, based on my own experience with um, specifically Newbridge and observing other bicyclists on Newbridge, um, the lack, uh, the, the, the nature of the temporary bulb outs right now is causing bicyclists to weave in and out of traffic. Um, and although I understand bike lanes are not part of this particular plan, I would hate to see a solution that effectively cuts them out of the picture. You know, so if we, you have the, the, the style of bulb out that comes out all the way out and doesn't really, and just sort of presumes that bikes are going to merge in with, um, you know, with shadows or something like that, um, you're you're basically um, you're basically kind of closing the door to bike lanes, right? Um, it, well, yeah, <laughs> I, I I think that's that that certainly would be a um, that that certainly would be an interpretation that we I I don't know if I would necessarily go that far. It, it is. We are not installing bike lanes, and that's primarily just to, to um, for and actually for two for two reasons. One is that it's actually not wide enough for a bike lane um, in, to to have the the travel lane with, and also the we, we can only get about I believe four feet 
um, of a, a shoulder strap. So it's actually not wide enough uh, to be a bike lane, unfortunately. So that's one. Uh, also, there's actually a, um, and this is sort of something that staff has received comment on even, even way before the Belhaven Traffic Common Plan uh, was developed, is that there's, a, there's a, a very overwhelming desire for wider sidewalks, um, particularly on Newbridge and Ivy. Uh, those, those two, and, and, and really those two segments that are in front of you right now. And, and so there is a, a, a desire, at least from the city size perspective, and we have actually put that in the TMP as well, is that you know, we want to widen the sidewalk on, on IV and on, on the bridge um, if, if there's funding available. So, so I, I definitely don't want to say that we necessarily just no more bike lanes, um, but there are some considerations being taken into account, and that's why we are not, we didn't recommend bike lanes here. So is there um, an alternate, like, is there, is part of the, any of these plans, is there a preferred bike route that like gives you one kind of, you know, east-west, con con sort of north-south connection if you want to do, if the idea is to widen the sidewalks on both Ivy and Newbridge? Right. So our plan currently has uh, Hamilton and Ivy be uh, sort of the, the two future potential bike routes. Uh, Ivy was another location where we had, uh, when the plan first uh, uh, was, the, when we were first developing the plan, Ivy was actually another location where we had suggested uh, bike lanes. Uh, in order to have bike lanes there, we would have to take away some parking. And at that time, uh, there was an overwhelming sense from the residents that they would prefer to, to retain the parking. So that, that also got uh, sort of removed from the plan as well. So, but as it currently stands, we have Hamilton and Ivy be sort of the two future bike routes. Got it. Um, I guess just, uh, I, I wanna let other commissioners, you know, weigh in here too, but, um, you know, even, even having some sort of narrow way to get through, I mean, I'm thinking about that like tiny little narrow strip along middle field, right? Like the, the part when, it, you know, you're heading that first little bit, when you get get across the border to Palo Alto, there's this like tiny little strip and it's not an official bike lane. And I know that Palo Alto deliberately, you know, because it wasn't wide enough, there's not bike lane markings on it. But you know, that's infinitely preferable to not having anything at all. So I think after you get across university, then it just disappears, right? So I just, I'm just trying to think ahead and knowing that, you know, Newbridge is a, is a, you know, is a big, is a street that people use and I've seen bicyclists use it. So um, I just, I just want to make sure we're, we're, you know, we can, we're doing whatever we can to think about the future of that as a bike route. Okay, thanks. Okay. Um, and uh, let's see, I'm going to uh, go to Commissioner Sebrian uh, next as the local, um, Commissioner Sebrin. Well, thanks. Um, so uh, I, ha I do have a couple of questions and pieces of feedback. I totally agree with Lydia about the bulb outs. Like it's a weird, I, I, and I also can see that it's really, it's a well foot traffic, car traffic, bike traffic, bus traffic, like everything goes down that tiny little street. And so I see the constraints on the street side. I do ponder how we could effectively like funnel the bikes to take Ivy instead of Newbridge. Um, frankly, it's yeah, I, I, I'm trying to figure out which corner of people are using Newbridge as a thoroughfare from where but I think maybe from East Palo Alto to get to the bike bridge. Anyway, a thing I ponder in thinking about it is um, Redwood City along Middlefield, right after you cross um, Woodside, going towards Redwood City. Um, I was just riding up there the other day, and they have put in a bike lane that is like an extension of the sidewalk. So like you're not on the street, you're on the sidewalk. It's clearly marked for bikes, but it's a really, it's a wide sidewalk, but it's painted different to show that it's meant to accommodate different traffics. So I just thought that was an interesting approach and it was super comfortable to ride in a section of roadway that frankly didn't used to be. So um, that is one thing. Um, I also agree with the 
one particular turn restriction like that has come up is the one on um it's terminal it's off of terminal so whatever that first street is that now you can't turn right at like you've always not sorry turn left you've always not been able to turn left at chilco on hamilton between those hours and it is what it is i get why it's there you used to be able to go up a block and turn and then we put in that turn restriction and so you can't the problem is that the intersection where we have a turn restriction right now is a four-way controlled stop sign which means everybody has to stop the next one up that we've now forced everybody onto who wants to get to their home in the neighborhood that's not cutting through is only a two-way stop and so to me it increases the likelihood of bikes on the bike boulevard and cars interacting at that intersection. Um, and I, it doesn't seem to have a clear point. Like all we're doing is pushing the traffic up a different street. Like it's not, anyway, so that is one turn restriction. Like I don't fully understand <clears throat> the point of it. And it seems like it's created a situation that's less safe. Um, I probably, um, I'm going to pause for a minute because I have to look back at my notes and other people probably have some things to say and I'll loop back in. How about that? Excellent. Um, Commissioner Altman. I actually lowered my hand. I think my question was answered. Um, th th just to be clear, this, this slide is what is currently implemented, correct? This slide that we're seeing is what is currently implemented and for which the survey was conducted. That's correct. So uh, in terms of the turn restrictions, uh, whatever that you see, uh, the blue boxes are what's out there already. But all the, the, the yellow bumps and all that, that, those are all in place currently. The, the yellow boxes are not. So there's two, currently two yellow boxes. There's one over by New Bridge and Carlton. And then there's another one over by Chilgo and Constitution. Those, those, those two yellow boxes have not been implemented. Those are so, part of the overall plan. Yeah, but we have not implemented those. Um, we basically, they're being treated as almost like um, like a reserve. The idea beforehand was if the blue boxes were not doing a sufficient job of deterring cut through traffic, that then we would implement the yellow boxes as a second space. But we have not yet implemented those yet. But, but for the most part, this slide represents the experiment right yes exactly and this is the, the response the survey responses in relationship to this the relationship in relationship to the term restrictions and then also in relationship to what is presented here uh with the plan so the plan okay. would include so, all the striping and all the ball bounds. so the, the survey responses are a combination of both a response to the current experiment mm -hmm. and to the extent people are aware of the proposed plan. Exactly, right. So in the statistics you presented, which slide represents the actual feedback for the current experiment? So the current, so it, it might be um, just because I, I did a poor job of um, not separating the graphics, but, but if you will, um, I, I would say a majority, it, it's, it's really more about this plan. Okay, so. And, Right. Okay, that's pretty much my confusion. So the yeah. experiment, has the experiment been surveyed? Right, the so yes, the, so the survey is on this particular plan itself, right here. The one that you're looking at right now. But that's the proposal, that's a plan, not the actual implementation. The implementation are uh, trial implementations. So, so what you, so basically if you have, if you drive out there right now, you will see basically all of the purple being implemented. So each of the corners, there would be, uh, if you go to that corner right now, you will see some paint and some flexible post, like those people that you can drive by and it kind of knocks out and then comes back up again. So all everything that's purple, those are implemented on the trial basis. The, the stuff that's in uh, green right now, uh, there's nothing out there because it's not out right away yet. Okay, um, so right? th this, this shows no speed bumps. This is not showing any speed bumps other than there's one over here by uh, Hamilton 
in front of the uh, Hamilton Park. Uh, part of this plant also has some speed bumps for what used to be, well, not used to be, it still is. So the, where the senior center and the um, uh, basically kind of the, this, this kind of wreck area right here also has some speed bumps. But overall, we did not propose a lot of speed bumps. And, and that's primarily because Choco, uh, New Bridge, and Ivy are all fire truck routes. And so in order, so we, we didn't want to necessarily, uh, in order to put speed bumps down, it's, it's, a, it's a much bigger endeavor. And then also the design would be somewhat tricky because we need to make sure that the fire districts are. But, but a lot of the feedbacks, a lot of feedbacks by the people who live there said they wanted more speed bumps, right? Right, yeah. So they do want to see more speed bumps. Um, there definitely one, a few mentioned of Hamilton. So I think and, and a couple of them actually mentioned this particular one being, being a good location. Um, and generally, it's more, more speed bumps along Pierce Grove, which you actually already have a lot of, uh, quite a few of them already. But yeah, there was a, a, quite a few feedback that, that mentioned, can we just have more speed bumps um, right. throughout the city, uh, throughout the neighborhood. I'm, I'm just trying to get it clear in my mind, and I'm, I'm sorry for the remedial questions again, no. um, but I'm uh, just trying to get clear in my mind what the survey actually, what what responses in the survey were actually for what's been implemented as an experiment? And uh, right. yeah. uh, cool. um, we'll uh, move on to Commissioner Barusi. Um, so I was just going to ask clarifying questions because I know we still have to do the public comment. Um, Kevin, I didn't see this mentioned in the report, but maybe you mentioned it. I just missed it. I think I remember on Newbridge that the city, maybe after repaving or something, also painted fog lines or something. There are white lines along. Am I missing? Am I wrong? Am I uh, right now, there is. Yeah, right now there are two um, shoulder shoulder stripes down Newbridge, or or what you call the the fog lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Um, so one thing that I um, so when I was checking that out earlier. Um, I also heard feedback from people about, about confusion around what bikes are supposed to do. And I think, um, and I actually did just a couple of random interviews with pedestrians from the neighborhood that I encountered. And, and um, both of them had thought that the, the temporary bollards were actually designed to protect cyclists. And, and, and the, imagine that the, the white lines plus the bollards are sort of supposed to be um, designating a bike route. And so, I think if if it wasn't clear in the survey, I mean, I think it was clear in the survey that that wasn't what it, the finishing thing was going to look like. But but I definitely um, I don't know if that would have come out in the survey. Um, but it just uh, and I guess I'll say too that um, I think that uh, that it, in the current configuration it's a little confusing. Um, and I'll also note that uh, I will echo council. Uh, I will echo. <laughs> Uh, Lydia and Jackie in saying that, that um, I've actually used that bike route quite a bit, the Newbridge bike route, um, when I'm going to um, to East Palo Alto, because uh, it connects straight to Bay. And the, the bike count data that you have also shows that, you know, you don't have that many cyclists, but there are definitely more cyclists using Newbridge than Ivy. So if you're thinking about bike routes, I'm not saying that should have bike lanes. I'm just saying that I think it's an important connectivity issue and so making that maybe not like not making it worse for cyclists um would would be an important consideration um i was also curious um so i think i understand better now that the the genesis of this plan was really about the cut through tra traffic but i remember walking through this section with um with council member taylor and and um she was expressing at that time that it was disappointing that we weren't looking at the whole of Newbridge. Um, and it's actually, it's actually kind of interesting because when you look at the accident data, you continue to have accidents along Newbridge at other intersections beyond Chilco as you go toward Pierce. And you lose the center line and you lose the bulb outs and you lose that sort of definitional that, that, you know, that makes it look narrower. And I guess I would love to see the city, if it's not too much trouble, um, take some, some data in that section around like speeding and um, and traffic counts to just see what's what's going on there because you know anecdotally it seemed like um, that was an area that could use a little bit more attention and maybe you already have looked at that um, but that was that was my other thought um, and then my final question was um, how wide are the current travel lanes on Newbridge 
and how wide were you thinking you could, or how narrow were you thinking you could make them in order to get wider sidewalks? Right. Right. So if I remember correctly, uh, so, so to answer your uh, first question about kind of going beyond the new bridge, going beyond Show Grove, yeah. um, I, I think, well, you are correct that this plan was kind of developed primarily to focus on cut through. So since we didn't establish the other half, the other half of the new bridge as part of the cut through route, they were not part of this plan. But I, I think your, your feedback about maybe looking into some data around that area would we'll definitely take take a look at that and, and see what we can do there. Um, it, it would certainly be a separate, uh, there will be a separate portion. Um, we, we'll basically, we can look into that. I think that's a good feedback. Um, in terms of the new bridge, currently, I believe the curb to curb distance, I think we were looking at 10 foot travel lanes and a four foot shoulder, if I remember correctly. So we're looking at maybe 20, 28 feet uh, curb to curb. So. So how wide could you get the sidewalks if you do that? So we most likely, if we do that, we most likely would uh, expand maybe another four feet or so out, kind of maintain that 10 foot. Uh, we typically don't want to go below 10 foot, especially considering new bridges, probably more heavily travel. It's also a, a fire route. So we want to make sure that the fires feel comfortable going through. So uh, I, I probably would not go anywhere below uh, a four foot addition to the sidewalk, meaning, 20 foot minimum for the travel lane on the beach for, for, um, for both directions total. Okay. I have more thoughts, but I just, I'll, I'll save those for later. Okay. Um, so uh, uh, Commissioner King has a hand and then we'll circle back to Commissioner Shubian. Thanks. Um, I just was curious as to how the bulb outs affect uh, the fire traffic going down Newbridge because you mentioned the, it's a fire route. Right, yeah, so it definitely, uh, it, we, we actually did quite an extensive collaboration with the fire district on this and, and the designs were, we, we took into account some of the turning radius that, they, that is necessary for the fire trucks to make that turn. Um, I, I will say that, you know, with those bulb outs, obviously it, it will make the, the turns a bit more difficult for the fire trucks. It's not, uh, it's doable, definitely more difficult, especially if you have a larger fire trucks. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if um, if you're coming from Newbridge and you need to make a right turn onto one of the side streets, your turn might be wide enough where you, you might encroach a little bit into the opposing lane. But but given time that it's a neighborhood street, um, it's typically a little bit of, uh, it's more it's more acceptable compared to maybe a bigger street where we don't want that to happen. Thank you. Great, um, uh, Commissioner Sebrian, back to you. Okay, um, <clears throat> let's see. I'm gonna, let me, right now, am I just supposed to be asking clarifying questions and saving discussion-y things for later or am I just asking all my things right now? Um, so we, we've been pretty good at, at keeping it to questions. So if you can keep it to questions then we're gonna come back around and, and make our comments. Um, so one uh, question I have is around the new bridge Willow intersection and um, whether there is a possibility of like an all walk pedestrian signal. So like all the pedestrians go and none of the cars go and then all the cars go without pedestrians because and the only reason I say that is because I am I see that thing with the right turns onto Willow and it is it is challenging because it gets a lot of pedestrian traffic right at that time. So it's just a curious whether that is even a thing we could think about doing or or not. And then I'll save everything else for later. I think. Oh, wait, one more. I lied. Uh, the median on Ivy, I know that there are restrictions because it's public utility and there's pipe underneath it. So we can't lay down any hardscape. But would there be a possibility of putting in like a gravel bike path that just went down the center median of Ivy? Sorry, I'm, I'm writing the questions down. I will be able to answer them uh, shortly. Right so, in, right, so so to answer your question about the 
kind of an all walk phase for, for Newbridge and, and Willow. It, it is something that we can bring up with, uh, to the Caltrans uh, officials to see if they would be amenable to, to the operation. Um, I will say it's, it's probably unlikely given that typically in order to do so, um, it, it will require quite a bit of uh, signal timing dedicated to the pedestrian phase. And in this case, it would be the, the all around pedestrian phase. And Willow, to my knowledge, is coordinated uh, for especially during the, the peak hours or for a sort of ideal flow along Willow, <laughs> even though it might not look like it sometimes. But uh, so, but it is uh, something that we can we can bring up to to the to the Caltrans folks and, and sort of solicit their feedback on that. Uh, in terms of uh, building a gravel along the the median uh, for for bike lane, the, so far they have I, I, I think for given given how many pipelines down there and the significance of them, uh, we haven't been successful at getting a lot of the stuff that we wanted uh, along Ivy to 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 go in there, but. Uh, given that if we wanted to pave a, a roadway and make it, um, if we want to make it a pathway, I, I think that's certainly something that we can we can bring it up with them as well and and, and see see um, the reception of it. Uh, thank you. So I see that um, Commissioner Bruzzi has additional questions, and I'll have questions, and then we will move on to comments. Uh, Commissioner Bruzzi. I'm so sorry I, to go again, um, but I'm, I'm really curious because I keep thinking about Newbridge and coming back to the goal of the project, um, which is, you know, in the staff report, um, it seems as though the goal is to discourage cut through and speeding traffic. Um, and I'm curious about how the bulb outs are supposed to do that. To me, they seem like intersection improvements that are more like sort of keeping like cut through traffic isn't making those turns. They're actually just driving through on Newbridge. They're just, they're cruising. They're like, the whole point is not to not to take a ride on Sevier or something, it's to go straight through. And so the bulb outs, I mean, as far as I can tell, like I think the narrowing of lanes and the widening of sidewalks will certainly like cause people to slow down. But it's, um, you know, right now it still seems like it's a little bit of, you know, it's a, it's a straight shot. Um, and turn restrictions seem like maybe, especially if they're actually enforced, like a more effective way of getting that done. And I don't dispute that like intersection improvements for safety reasons are really good. I was just curious if you could speak a little bit about, I guess, coming back to the question about speed bumps, you know, that is the other thing, right? That would actually like maybe slightly deter people who are cutting through. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just wondered how you were thinking about that on staff. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a fair question, definitely. And, and I would say primarily with the bulb outs, uh, at least our initial goal was that with, um, with the intersections being at least vis visibly narrower, that as they are driving through the intersection, hopefully they'll slow down. And, and as, as a result of that, kind of carry that slower speed all the way through the entirety of the segment. Now, I, you know, given the speed data, um, we're not seeing that effect. So, it, it, and, and, and I, was, I would certainly agree with you that perhaps, at least just from the data perspective, we're definitely not slowing down and um, we're not seeing a, a slowdown uh, of the through traffic. Um, so, it, it, right now, the bulb outs are primarily benefiting, I would say, um, kind of raising the awareness of returning vehicles, as well as kind of an improvement for the pedestrians at this point. Um, it, it certainly is not. Not necessarily uh, having the effect of slowing down through traffic, like you mentioned. Um, so one follow on to that, a lot of the so when you look at when you look at the sweaters data from from Newbridge, it seems like all the accidents are in intersections, and that's kind of common everywhere, right? But you get these little this like polka dots at every intersection, um, and a lot of it is bike and ped. Um, well, actually, a lot of bike accidents, um, and and I'm imagining, although I haven't dug into the details, that a lot of this is just sort of like you know classic scenario where a two-way stop sign and people are crossing and there's like a visibility issue or something. Um, so I guess what I would just say is um, as we're thinking about the bulb outs and the design, I would hope that there would be nothing incurred by the design that would accidentally in any way like reduce visibility for crossing bike and ped people. So like not putting like bushes on the bulb outs <laughs> or, you know, uh, having, you know, additional height or anything that restricts visibility. Because I do think that's um, you know, when people don't have stop signs there and they're going straight through, um, that that could be a concern. 
Great, I'll stop talking, thanks. So that was a good uh, uh, a comment. And so I think now let's actually, let me ask questions and then we can move on to a round of give spare questions, ask them along with your comments. Um, so I'm gonna ask some questions and then we'll go around to comments and any lingering questions we may have. Um, I have a couple of outreach questions. Um, so can you go back to the survey where it so showed like renters and owners? Yes. Um, what percent of people in the neighborhood are renters? Does anybody know? Uh, do we know that information? Yes. I, I do not. Seven percent. What what percent? Um, it's it's weird that I know this. Um, I was looking at the district recently. It is. I want to say it was fifty-seven percent. I think it's over half. Just I know from when I was pushing for little free libraries, um, um, a lot of renters. Yeah. So twelve percent seems fairly small. Um, was how was the survey? De delivered in terms of the ability to reach renters and have we ever been able to successfully reach renters that represent uh, more than half of the population? Well, um, so the renters are, so the way that the surveys got sent out, if, if you, we use our own database, our database, we obviously just send one to the, the address. And, and if, if there's no data of the actual name of the owner, you'll just say residents of that, of that property. And then of course, that means there is a, a property owner. So the property owner would be on record and that person would also get a survey in addition to that. So in, in this case, basically all the renters or at, at least the, the address itself would receive a survey. Uh, if you own the property, uh, and and so you would also get a survey on top of the renter getting a survey as well. And do you know whether the city has ever done anything that has been successful at achieving a higher share of renters? Because 12 seems quite low compared to the share of renters. Do you have any com comparable information? Right. So I, I would say this is probably one of the more larger scale of male uh, delivery outreach that we have done. The only other one that I remember doing uh, was for the Willows term restrictions. So that one definitely also went out to the entire the entire Willows neighborhood, um, and and the, the same the same thing sort of uh, was done there too. So renters get a get a survey, and then also the also the property owners. I do I don't believe that for that particular question that we um, necessarily separate out. The, the renter versus owner. I don't know if we have necessarily have that data, mm -hmm. um, but okay. I would say yeah. Those 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 are the two neighborhoods where we actually deliver something of this scale. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have another outreach question. Um, in terms of the outreach, um, I there there's a youth advisory committee which reports to Parks and Rec. But I have learned that its goal is not, and its its um, domain is not only Parks and Rec, um, but it is possible to ask uh, the people on the Youth Advisory Committee more questions. And was this topic um, brought to the Youth Advisory Committee? And the reason why I'm asking is that uh, you know, a lot of the considerations here are about, um, you know, uh, a biking and walking and improving safety. And it seems like uh, youth might have a distinctive uh, point of view who use the streets. So has that been considered as an avenue to get youth feedback? Right. So uh, unfortunately, the, the short answer to that is uh, no, we have not. Um, because so the plan was incepted back in 2017. Um, if memory serves me right, I think the youth committee, um, which I've attended a meeting, one meeting before, I believe they were fairly recent. Um, so in, in terms of, and all the trial installations were done back in June of last year, I think was when it was all completed. So, so in terms of the process itself, like for instance, the development of the plan, unfortunately that it, it did not go through the youth committee. Uh, just given the um, that that it was developed um, back in 20, 2017, 2018. Ish. Um, okay. Uh, some of the community members asked about the 
corridor signal timing on Willow, which is out of the scope of this project. Um, but I vaguely remember that there was some kind of Caltrans smart corridor program on a variety of different corridors. Was Willow one of the smart corridors? And if so, is the timing, it, like are there tools to deal with that timing you know, out of scope of this plan? Right, so yes, Willow is one of the smart corridors that, um, that we have um, co been coordinating with Caltrans on. And I, I believe it is, the, all the equipments are in, um, I, and I believe it was, at, at some point it was running on the, uh, the smart corridor timing, which means it, it kind of constantly updates itself based on the demand of the previous cycles. Um, also, so that, that's sort of to, to answer that particular question. Also, some of the other responses, or, uh, some of the other considerations, uh, we're talking about Hamilton. Uh, for instance, there's a, a, a response about Hamilton, the new bridge, and that's also something that we've been coordinating with the Caltrans on as well. So there's a, 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 few, a few of the elements mentioned. Uh, we are actually in the process of coordinating. Great, uh, 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 thanks for answering that. Um, so with that, we wanna uh, go and start uh, collecting comments from members of the body and then we'll turn to, actually, no, I have one more question, sorry, and then um, a comment from the body. Um, is there a cost estimate to implement the staff recommendation? Uh, not yet. Uh, we, we have some really high level kind of per unit cost, but, but at this point, everything is still uh, too high level to, to come up with a, um, a reasonable cost estimate. So we don't, we don't have a cost estimate yet. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, so, so um, let's see. Do we have any hands from public comments that maybe can inform commissioner comments? Um, I'm not, uh, 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 Patrick, do you wanna uh, ask if there are any public comments um, we can take now and then we can see if anybody has any additional comments after we have uh, commissioner comments, but before we make motions. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, if you do have a public comment, please just use the raise hand feature uh, and then I'll be able to unlock your microphone or if you're calling in, just press star nine uh, for the same thing. All right, I am not seeing any hands raised from members of the public. Um, and I'm gonna go back if, to see if people have comments after we make our comments. Um, so uh, let's see, I starting to see commissioners with hands, um, Commissioner Sirian. I feel like a star tonight. Um, thanks, Adina. So, uh, okay, I have a few more, like, just comments and about it. Um, the I saw one of the public comments around that green light, or actually not the green light, sorry, the stoplight at um, Chilco and Instagram. And I... I understand. I know I, Kevin, I think we had a conversation about this when that thing first went in and their timing was terrible because they installed that thing to start working right when nobody was working there. Um, and so uh, I, but I, I would, it, it defaults to red currently for traffic, like all the time. And so even on the weekends when there's nobody working there. It, anyway, so I would agree with that public comment that it needs to be green more often than it is. Um, I would also, um, let's see, the like the thing about the, I'm gonna wrestle with Newbridge and the bulb outs and I hadn't really considered what Katie said, but it's true. Like a lot of the, the bulb outs are protecting pedestrians at those turns, but I would say that all the scuff marks on the bulb outs would prove that we kind of need something um, because it, it there are a lot of pedestrians on that road and it's not particularly safe. I, I'm, I'm still, I don't know the answer. I'm not sure that bulb outs, anyway. 
if we were to do the bulb out since it's 50 50 i'm inclined to support the one that is not just an extension of the sidewalk and only because i really just feel like over the grand scheme of things like newbridge is not done being figured out how it's going to work best and so i'd rather not put investment i'd rather wait and see what we can do to it and put in the detached um bulb outs because even though they're permanent they look like they would be easier to take out than an extended sidewalk and then um i've already asked about the all walk and um oh and that modification that you mentioned about only having the four to six p.m right term restriction i think that is a really smart modification because that would seem to get at specifically cut through traffic primarily because that's who's mostly trying to leave at four to six although i would add sometimes that cut through traffic are actually people who live on the other side of menlo park and are leaving kelly park and so I don't want to label them cut through traffic any more than I want the Willows residents to label me cut through traffic. So I think we just have to consider that some of those people are are actually like residents using uh, resident stuff. And I think that's all of the notes I had. Oh, and the last one was about the speeds. I kind of, it's hard to measure whether these are really helping speeds because there's been such a reduction in Facebook traffic. Um, it just means that our own residents actually are the ones who are driving faster and because there's not as much traffic. So I think it's hard to really measure because we're not measuring, like we're not even measuring fruits against fruits. It's like fruits against pasta um, and like how different it is without the pandemic. So um anyway that's my feeling about whether it had an effect on speed it's really hard to know without enough traffic to see what it looks like yeah um all right uh commissioner altman yeah just um since bulb outs are is a big piece of the uh, the recommendation there's only one bulb out on new bridge right So for bulb out, there will actually be, be several. There's actually bulb but, out. On okay, so I'm, I'm still confused because 11 is the bulb out, right? Uh, number two is the bulb out. So let me, sorry, let me go navigate to the bigger, the one image with the bigger. Um, okay, if it's, if it's my, my boo boo, sorry. But no, 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 no worries. Um, it says more crosswalk is two, and then 11 is the bulb out, right? Oh, I apologize. Yeah, it, look, it looks like we have, um, we might have mixed up the numbers <laughs> to- at this Oh, okay. Point. So yeah. is it, again, I'm back to, you know, what is actually being surveyed. Right. So when the public saw this and as the plan that you surveyed for along with the experiment, right? is this what they responded to? Yes. Yeah. So, so they didn't see the bulb outs. They saw- Mark crosswalk. No, they they saw bulb outs. They saw mark mark crosswalk and bulb outs. So, for instance, for every corner right here, um, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but I'm I'm pointing at say Newbridge and Severe, where there's those four kind of okay. So the number triangle the looking thingies. So those are the bulb outs. So if you drive out to that intersection right now. Okay, uh, so the numbers are, the numbers are just reversed. Exactly. My my apologies. It looks like the numbers. Stop. The, the, the numbers got jumbled up for, for some reason. Okay, I got it, thanks. Uh, Commissioner Lee? Okay, so I'm gonna wrestle out wrestle a little bit more with the Newbridge bulb out thing because I, I do have quite a bit of personal experience on that road. So um, Kevin, this is a question for you. Does the attack detached bulb out style, does that give enough space for a bike to go through? comfortably or is it just like you know how much space is there right so um it, it actually would not so if we if we were to move forward with the detach because the detach is typically something that we design to sorry i'm going to navigate to the image um to address oh not address but to sort of alleviate uh, uh storm drain issues so what you will see is actually um Sorry, I'm navigating to the, to the slides so that way everyone can see. So I, as you can kind of see that basically it's the gutter. So mm -hmm. if you kind of focus your, your attention to the lower 
lower right image, um, you'll see that it's the gutter. So the separation is really just the gutter separation. And given the amount of right of way that we have, um, the, the bulb out will most likely be no more than you know, two to three feet total width uh, because we got to take into account uh, the, the gutter, which typically is about a foot and a half, and we still want to maintain a 10, a 10 foot travel away or so. So the, the detached, the actual bulb out itself is probably going to be no more than you know, two to three feet wide. Uh, so it's not, it's not meant to got be it. a bicycle improvement. Got it. Okay. So I am, um, I, again, kind of focusing on the safety of the street and how to slow down streets without putting in speed bumps um, and knowing that paint is a relatively economical way of doing it. Has staff considered just, you know, striping in two foot or four foot non-bike lanes that are just lane narrowing <laughs> lines on the road um, that would then not foreclude the, you know, making those sidewalks bigger in the future, but would narrow the road visually also and, and allow bikes, give bikes, bicyclists a place um, to be on the road. And then, you know, if you were to keep some of those, keep like the plastic bollards, some of the plastic bollards, if you keep those in on the corner, but like make them so that the bike lane flows through them, then you effectively have some level of protection for protection. You have bike lanes and hopefully you have slower traffic because the whole road looks narrower. Again, I'm, I'm struggling. I know that pedestrian safety is really important. And I, you know, I, I know that this, this is in well-meaning this design, but I feel very strongly that having a design that basically kind of completely ignores bicyclists altogether is not, is not, a, it's not prioritizing safety. You see what I mean? And, you know, I, I just did, you know, there's supposed to be 54, I just did a quick Google, 5,400 residents in Belhaven. So that means like less than 2% of people responded. And, you know, as much as I think, you know, those, all those respond, those surveys are important, you know, I don't, we don't know, there's nothing about whether they're pedestrians or bicyclists or, you know, whether they use the roads that way. So I feel like we're, we, we need to speak up here because this is gonna go forward unless someone says something. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm at. So, so I, I will say that, that so there are currently sort of the, the shoulder stripes. So I, I don't know if that's what uh, Commissioner Lee you are referring to. Um, I actually have a, a image that I can I can broadcast here. So if you give me a little bit of time, I can um, go ahead and, and pull that image out. So that, that can help um, further the discussion. I know that there are stripes that lead up to the um, intersections. Um, I don't remember what's going on right along the, oh, okay, so we do right. have narrow lines right in there. Okay, so right. the problem so is when they, when you get up to the, so the problem is when you get up to those bulb outs, they will basically end. And yep. then, so, so that's confusing, right? Because we do have stripes right now, and they're not bike lanes, and now they really won't be bike lanes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and I, I fully recognize sort of the, the confusion there. So, uh, and, and, and as you can see here, I believe this is the intersection of um, Carlton and Newbridge. So kind of the up, the north south, if you will, is Newbridge and then the east west is. Um, so you can see the bulb outs, right. you can see the scuff marks, and you can see kind of further along the way, there's yeah. that little tiny, that shoulder stripe that's uh, right. probably about four foot wide if you measure from the right. stripe. Okay. Yeah. yeah, okay, so that's so part of the confusion. Yeah. Right, that's part of the confusion right now. So you can see from what I've seen is people are using these stripes and then they get to these bulb outs and they're like, oh, now I have to go into traffic because there's not enough space for me between the bollard and the, the curb, right? Right, right. So, so, so the reason why we recommended sort of this shoulder stripe to begin with, you know, mm -hmm. it, really two reasons. One is, you know, it's, uh, um, well, what the primary reason is really try to kind of create this narrowing effect. So you have the yellow line on the left, you have kind of this white line to the right. Mm -hmm. So the, the, mm -hmm. the initial, well, not the initial, but the sort of the intent here is kind of hoping that the cars will drive a little slower because you're being, um, you know, you're being squished with uh, lines on both sides. So, but I, I do recognize that, you know, that in terms of creating this kind of pseudo bike lane that people thought is a bike lane, but it's not, that wasn't really the, the true intent to begin with. And, and right. I, I definitely recognize the, the confusion that is being created here. Um, yeah, so uh, Commissioner Sebrand. 
Yep. Um, I, gosh, the bollards. It's true. Like I can see that the striping creates confusion and, um, the thing, oh, I know what I was thinking of was one of the questions that came up was around, um, parking for residents. And I am definitely like, there are a lot of cars that per household over here. And so I would say that parking is definitely an issue, but I wonder if we couldn't look at parking, like removing parking, putting parking restrictions that are time-based so that maybe during the early morning peak commute time, you can't park on the road. And so that sort of gives a little extra width for the, for bikes to be included, because as you look at the map, like you can, you can tell the bikes you want them to take a different bike route all you want but that like Newbridge is the straight shot there is no and there's no like trying to funnel them anywhere else just doesn't make sense and they're not going to do it and right. so given the fact that Newbridge is the way that you would go from the bike bridge to East Palo Alto like I just don't see how we can put in place a thing that so clearly puts bikes into the buses and cars and like heavy car traffic and buses so um yeah as we talk more about the bollards i become less a fan of them and i well i i just wonder what else we can look at to make the pedestrian aspect of it safer without needlessly sucking up road space from bikes who also okay. need it yeah well uh, if i can just kind of um answer a couple of the uh, questions there. So I, I think for, at least for the purpose of this study, where we're looking at New Bridge from Willow uh, to Choco, um, the, the road is actually not wide enough for parking. So uh, it's not something that we need to worry about here. It, the parking um, comment was more about ID uh, and to some extent um, uh, Hamilton uh, at the beginning of this, this whole endeavor back in 2017. In, in this case, um, the, it, it's just simply sort of, um, we just don't have enough right away or width in this case to have a proper bike lane. And that's why we kind of have that shoulder strike that, that serves kind of a narrowing effect as well as designating a little bit of a space uh, for those few bikers. Um, I, I think that then the, the comment then could be um, whether or not the commission felt like we still want those ball belts uh, along, at, at least along New Bridge. Um, as you can see here, um, basically at each corner, you will see ball belts on New Bridge and you will see ball belts on the side street. And it's all it's always the ball belts are always coming from uh, the approach. So as you're approaching the intersection, that's when you see the ball belts. So um, if, if there's a strong desire from the commission here, then um, you know perhaps if we want to keep keep the line, so we keep this line right here. Um, and, and then if you felt like the ball belts are kind of creating that that's that that um sort of a, an adverse effect then then we can certainly kind of look at whether or not we want to continue with the ball back uh, to begin with and, and that hopefully that that could be a feedback that we that we can get from the commission as a whole mm -hmm. uh, thanks um so commissioner king commissioner baruzzi i will call for the last time after them i'll, I'll for the last time for any uh, public comments and then see if anyone can start to converge on a motion. Um, Commissioner King. Oh, thanks. I wondered, I know you um, had the uh, kind of high tech um, reduction of speed signs during the um, temporary trial, but did you have anything kind of low tech like this is not a through street sign or closed residents only signs or kind of more a simplified measure because isn't the whole point here to reduce the through traffic? And then my second point is, can this be a, a two phase where um, the bulb outs, at least the construction of them is phase two, but phase one could be a um, kind of more uh, painted construction. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so to kind of answer your two, so the first one, um, so, we actually do have a few signs outside of the Bayhaven neighborhood that says, um, you know, no, I believe the sign says uh, no through traffic. Um, it, and one, I think there's one actually located 
right over, sorry, I'm trying to find an image that actually include that location. So I, I believe we have a sign somewhere right here that says no, you know, no through traffic. Uh, we have a couple more that's over by Constitution and those were installed about the same time back in, I wanna say 2018 or so. Um, those unfortunately are not enforceable signs. They're just signs, like you say, kind of telling the people, hey, you know, it's a neighborhood, you really shouldn't be cutting through, but um, those don't have any um, enforceable uh, values other than just uh, kind of a, um, a warning sign right there. So, and, and, and sort of in a way, that's why some of these turn restriction signs were put in, it was because they're more enforceable. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, that to, to that extent. And then the, uh, the second part about uh, kind of the bulb outs and how we can uh, kind of stagger the phasing. Uh, so right now, those are paint and flexible ballers. And if we do move forward with a permanent installation, uh, it, it will it will basically be a concrete with uh, some some extent of a curve. Like we can we can change the curve height uh, depending on the design, obviously. But there there will be a curve. So if the recommendation is to to kind of keep it as is, uh, we will certainly welcome that as a recommendation as well. Um, and, and that just depending on sort of the, uh, the the will of the commission as a whole. All right, thanks. Um, so I am not seeing any commissioner hands. I am going to um, uh, see if there are any members of the public um, who would like to make any comments on this. Um, and I am not seeing any hands from members of the public. Um, so I'm gonna bring this back to the commission and see if anyone um, wants to uh, take a stab at a motion or other steps towards converging on a recommendation to council. I have a, I have would like, it's not a question, but it's before I could even begin to think about a motion. I'm wondering if uh, Kevin, with all of your awesome notes that you have there, um, like collectively, I don't know. I don't, I can't remember all the things that we have suggested. So um, is there any way you could sort of recap what we have, what things seem like can be done? Right, yeah, thank you. So, so far I'm, I'm hearing uh, quite a few feedback. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, list at least some of the actionable items from, from staff's perspective. So uh, generally, I think there's uh, a desire from both the, the commission and the pub, general public to see if there are more opportunities that we can put speed hums in. Uh, so that's something that we can coordinate with the, um, the fire district on. It most likely could be, it could be a separate endeavor um, or if timing works out, we, we could combine that. But I, I, I do want to kind of set the expectation uh, where we'll definitely be able to start a dialogue as soon as possible. Um, there's a couple other things. Uh, one is the intersection of New Bridge and Willow, the idea of, of an a all walk phase. Um, and, and, and then um, and then followed by all the vehicle phases. So that's something that we can connect with Caltrans on and, and kind of get their feedback uh, on that regard as well. Uh, there was also a comment about uh, Ivy potentially using the center median to, to convert them into uh, uh, some sort of, essentially a bike lane, if you will. Uh, I think I think the gravel was used, but most likely if we do move forward with something, it'll probably be more like an AC pathway, an asphalt pathway. Mm -hmm. So, so those were kind of the actionable items on on staff's end. Um, I, I, so far, I, I'm hearing uh, definitely some reservations about what the what the robots will do to the bike traffic specifically along New Bridge. Um, although I haven't actually, uh, and I apologize if that's not the case, I haven't heard any sort of definitive recommendation or an alternative recommendation to those robots specifically as well. So. Definitely would welcome uh, feedback. Um, there was, uh, assuming if we move forward with it, there was a co couple comments about visibility, making sure that the robots don't don't create any adverse um, visibility uh, distractions for the corners, and that definitely will be the case. We will not create any design anything that would uh, it somehow reduce the visibility at the intersections. So those are what I have so far. 
Uh, Commissioner, uh, thanks, Commissioner Bruzzi. Um, yeah, sorry, I remember what I wanted to ask, and this is sort of leading me again to this to this question about, about the ball bouts, because I, I understand that there are sort of pedestrian safety. Um, one thing that seems to be missing from the data in the staff report is, um, like to me, the, actually the most, the most interesting intersection is Newbridge and Chilco, because that's a route, that's potentially a route to school. Um, and actually, when I looked at the safe routes data from Bellhaven, um, from the Ravenswood district, and admittedly it's old, um, they, I haven't seen data since 2013, but at the time when they took data, the pattern was a significant percentage, like 20% of the kids were walking to school, but, only, but less than 1% were biking to school. So if, like, if kids are walking to school, like, you know, we, we do need to think about pedestrian safety. Um, Kevin, did we just not have data from, um, from 2017 for Newbridge and Chilco um, at the, for, for pedestrian, bike, and, and vehicle counts? Because I think that's... Um, no, we, we should we, uh, for the intersection counts. I, so let me just make sure that I um, understand your question correctly. So you're asking if we have counts at yeah. New, Newbridge and Choco back in 2017. Yeah, because it looked right. like I didn't see them in the staff report. Uh, the answer uh, should be yes, but let me let me go ahead and pull up the um, the staff report real quick. Um, I believe we have we have attached. The comparison uh, counts as an attachment. So let me. Uh, I'll navigate if if you have any more comments. Feel free to. to well, so so I guess my main my main thinking is that you know I'm I'm sort of with other people in the use case for Newbridge, right? Which is um, you know if the bullbots aren't actively slowing traffic, um, and they're and they are potentially causing danger, enhancing the danger for cyclists who we know do use Newbridge. Then there better be like a really strong use case. Oh, and we don't necessarily think they're reducing cut through traffic, but we wouldn't know because of the pandemic. Um, then we should probably have a really strong use case for pedestrians. And so then what I want to know is do a lot of pedestrians in these intersections where you're adding bulb outs along Newbridge are a lot of pedestrians habitually crossing and and um, and one intersection I think is particularly interesting is the of the ones that you're recommending bulb outs would be the one with Chilco because that's the one that basically takes you to the child development center the library and Bellhaven school sorry I'm going like super micro here um uh but you know is that that to me I mean if you tell me that during a normal time like in 2017 a whole bunch of people in the AMP car in particular were crossing there then that would make to me sense to like maybe stick with a bulb out, but otherwise I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm supportive of it. Um, and I and when I looked back in the staff report to check, the data were weirdly missing just for that one intersection. For the yeah, it looks, looks like you're correct. Um, for some reason, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and um, this is basically kind of. I'm sorry, I should have noticed this before the meeting and not put you on the spot. I apologize. No, 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 not at all. Uh, yeah, so. Looks like we were missing that particular intersection back in 2017. Um, and and uh, so right now, the one that you're looking at, this is, I believe this is um, 20, this is the recent one, 2021. So we're definitely seeing, um, there's definitely some pattern bike traffic, um, but I, I think this is something that we can, we can look into. Um, we can see if we have any historic counts back in the day that we can um, see the, the usage for pattern bike. I guess um, my, my, I'll just, I'll just, close by my comment by just saying, I just think there should be a really, really solid use case for bulb outs in these intersections to counteract the, like it should be like, we know it does this and this and this, like these are the three clear improvements that we're seeing um, that you that that will benefit the, the neighborhood um, and these particular populations, right? And, and, um, and so, which is why the staff are recommending this, even though it might cause some confusion or some like, problems for for cyclists so so I, I just don't I don't see that which doesn't mean it doesn't exist right yeah, yeah. And, and and that's certainly I think that's a that's a very good feedback uh, you know, from from staff's perspective we are recommending the bulb outs uh, primarily to kind of reduce the crossing distance along new bridge and also the turning speed so those are kind of your the very prototypical benefits uh, that, that that are associated with the bulb out and and of course rec definitely recognizing the confusion that it creates especially uh, with the with the shoulder strike along along new bridge um, so I, I 
if, if you don't mind me kind of um, just kind of asking, so we can certainly look into, see if we can have some historic data that, that supports the, the pre, pre-COVID usage of both pen and bike along New Bridge. Uh, it looks like we're missing uh, Choco and a New Bridge, but we we'll definitely have accounts for it. We'll, we'll look for some other accounts. Um, but but I, I would say at this moment in time, we are recommending the, the bow bow, rep, sort of recognizing the pedestrian and the turning speed reduction benefit that are associated with, with that. And so, so if, if, the, commi- if uh, the commission feels like we want to kind of maybe look into some additional data to, to further support that, um, given, the, given the advantage and disadvantage of, of them, uh, we can certainly take that as a common and, and look into that. Um, yeah, can you uh, move back to the staff recommendation? Yes. Because um, I'm going to take a crack at something, not hearing a motion yet from colleagues. So I'm going to take a crack at something, and it might be wrong, but I'll I'll, I'll, I'll try. So, um, in and and maybe do uh, a, a straw votes to see if we're building towards um, something. So in this. The speed feedback signs to retain permanent measure. Um, you did, uh, that seemed like a reasonable uh, staff recommendation. Didn't see any problems with that from the feedback. Um, uh, can people use hands to be like, yeah, it seems like a reasonable staff recommendation. All right, and, and if you can use the digital hand, um, that'll be good because I can't see everybody at the same time. All right, I, I, I think that's everybody. Yeah, I think, I think we're, so we're, we're, we're with that. Okay, um, we're gonna uh, wait on the bulb outs. Um, okay, so with the Ivy Drive, this is um, pending SFPUC, but also waiting, uh, getting the um, the feedback from SFPUC about the potential of doing a center gravel from the from the SFPUC. Um, so um, uh, staff recommendation on Ivy Drive plus the let's investigate the potential for gravel on the right of way. Um, uh, a hand for your tentative opinion, is that a reasonable thing? All right, we're, 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 we're good there. Um, on Willow and Newbridge, um, it sounded like um, like there there uh, you know w- weren't any major concerns raised about that. And Commissioner Sebrin, who's uh, the neighborhood resident, um, likes the staff uh, recommendation with the modification of the weekday four to six. So staff recommendation on Willow and Newbridge. Uh, all right, uh, we're we're uh, we're good. And and Jackie had said it before, so she doesn't need to raise a hand to say what she said again. Um, and okay, lastly, um, on the bulb outs, I'm seeing in the data, um, you know, some ambivalence from the people who filled out the survey as well as a lot of ambivalence from this commission in terms of the potential unintended side effects for people that are using this as the, you know, like the direct cycle route between, uh, uh, you know, Bellhaven and and East Palo Alto to MA and, you know, other destinations um, and, concern that it is achieving its goals in terms of the speed data and also concerns that we won't even know for sure because we don't have uh, you know post pandemic uh, uh, traffic data either. So I am wondering and so w- w- one of the uh, ideas that Kevin raised was, well, maybe we can go back and get more pedestrian and bike usage data, but even that won't 
so much tell us what we want in terms of the post pandemic and the side effects. So I am wondering whether there might be some other continued temporary paint based modification that you know maybe doesn't have the confusing bollards um, or like like if, if 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 staff can can come up with some other kind of temporary solution that tries to address the constraints that we leave in place for another period of time and see how it's working as um, you know the pandemic alleviates and um, you want to that 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 last thing was kind of um, you know vague so other commissioners may step in with agreement or refinement or disagreement. How about if I take a stab at making it just, um, I support what you're saying. What I think I would avoid trying to make any of the bulb outs permanent right now. Like that would be the thing that I would 100% say is let's not make them permanent. I would like to explore both the wider sidewalks aspect that, that was talked about and what other kind of treatments we could think of to keep pedestrians safe. I would not, to Katie Beruzzi's point, I don't think that there is a ton of traffic crossing across Newbridge so much as there is traffic crossing all the side streets up Newbridge. That doesn't mean that there's none, but in terms of pedestrian traffic, most of them are on what side of Newbridge they want to be when they start up that street. Um, but that still means a ton of pedestrians on all those side streets. So I would encourage us to pick the plan with the bulbats that is like, let's explore it more and get more information before we make a firm decision, before we build anything permanent. Mm -hmm. Is that a shorter way? Like, can we just not make a permanent decision on that and add wider sidewalks? Uh, Chair, I don't know if you want me to respond. Uh, uh, yeah, can, can, you, can, you, yeah can, continue, can you respond okay. with, you know, what staff would do with a recommendation for something right. that was continued to be not permanent. Right. Yeah. So I, I will go ahead and um, if you can let me know, I, I'm pulling up the uh, a kind of a Google area right now to, to kind of help facilitate the, the conversation. So uh, East, West, New Bridge, uh, North, South, this side street. So as you can see right now, you know, like I mentioned earlier, if you approach the intersection right now, there are bulb outs along Newbridge and the side street. So what I'm hearing is, at, um, you know, at least for the Newbridge, uh, for the time being, not to convert those ones into permanent feature. It sounds like there is indirectly saying that the ones on the side street might be okay um, because, because, you know, because there's more people crossing on the, oh, crossing the side street. So therefore, you know, the ball bus there would, would, you know, create kind of that, that benefit for, for the pedestrians. So those could be, those, those could be permanent, but, and, and please correct me if I'm uh, over, 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 um, over, overstating here. So, so the, the new bridge would kind of keep them temporary for now uh, and then see if there's any other, uh, other um, measures that we can do. But then for the side street, we can go ahead and make them permanent. Um, does that sound reasonable? Uh, I would raise my hand for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we have comments from a couple more uh, uh, more commissioners. Um, Commissioner Lee. Um, so I think I, in in theory, I think keep having the the permanent the permanent installations of the um, bulb outs on the side streets makes sense because it addresses the the fast crossing I mean the fast turning um, I'd like to see in whatever we adopt also that we change the temporary bollard situation right now because right now it is impeding bike traffic so I'd like to see whatever we move forward you know if if so basically whatever temporary bulb outs that are on Newbridge itself going forward do not you know, whatever that treatment is, either paint, paint or keeping the temporary bollards, we don't, that the, those are adjusted so they don't impede bike traffic.
Yeah. Um, uh, I, uh, I apologize for that, but if I can just kind of ask a clarifying, clarifying question. So it is the is the feedback in this case then um, to not not have the bulb outs? My, my apologies, I'm, I'm a little confused with what is being asked here. Are we, are we saying for new bridge to move the bulb out? So are we saying to eliminate the bulb outs for, for the temporary? Like, right, uh, right, for the temporary thing, I think, I think having, I mean, clearly if there's scuff marks all over them, they are doing something like people are, people are being protected. Something's being protected from something right here, <laughs> right? If we have cars running into them. So I'd rather take that, I mean, people are probably used to them now to some degree, right? They've been in place for a while. Um, and so uh, I don't see the, like having the bullards themselves is not my objection though. It's just the way they're set up right now. It really does force bikes into the, and so maybe um, setting whatever temporary setup is bike friendly. I don't know how to, um, I don't want to be too specific about it, but basically like right now that like that bullard that's closest to us is basically saying, you know, bikes, you can't come in here. We're shrinking your, your bike lane down. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. So, so that makes sense. So I, I guess I, the, the only thing I will say to that is, you know, in but we'll certainly go back and sort of revisit this, but in terms of being able to move the bulb outs, I, I would imagine we probably can't go anywhere beyond putting them right on top of the, the white stripe because mm -hmm. anything beyond that, we are starting to kind of reducing the actual travel length. And, right. and that would be, that would not be um, kind of um, ideal in this case. So I, I certainly recognize, I, I think I recognize what you're saying uh, but at the same time, we are somewhat restricted to where we can shift the bulb outs. And, and I, I guess what I'm saying is the most I can, we can shift is possibly moving it on right on top of the white line, but with the potential that, you know, more cars might, might hit it because hmm. the, the, the current design was intended to have the bulb, have the ballers represent where the future curve would be. Right. So effectively, what we're saying by moving the ballers right on top of the white line is that we're expanding the future curve. And, and so that's going to make the turns more difficult for the cars. I don't know if that makes sense, uh, the way I'm describing it. Um, yeah, I mean, I might be, we might be getting a little into the, like, you know, the details. I know that yeah. the spacing is a little different from corner right. to corner, too. Like, that's part of the why it's confusing, because, like, sometimes it looks like you were supposed to go through, and sometimes you, it's, like, definitely too narrow. So... Yeah, uh, I don't I don't know if I have an answer to that. I just think that, you know, the current setup is confusing. And so if there's a way to move the temporary bollards so that it's mm -hmm. clear that the bikes can pass through, yeah. um, if it's not, then I would advise like going with some sort of paint based solution instead. Yeah, no, I, I think I, I hear what, what Commissioner Lee is you're saying. So we can go back and sort of reevaluate this, uh, you know, not, not just this corner, obviously, all the corners, but let's see what else we can do there. Um, I, I just wanted to kind of set the expectation that, uh, you know, we can't, um, that there's a finite amount of rooms that we can move those ballers to the left or to the right, um, obviously to the left for the benefit of the bikers. But um, we only have a finite amount of room that we can move those ballers, shy of taking them away completely. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, 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 so with, with that, taking it as more general direction rather than engineering from the commission, um, Commissioner uh, Bruzzi had a hand and then Commissioner Cole, which is hopefully converging. Yeah. Um, mine is just really quick. I was looking to see when you took the data, Kevin, and it looked like it was in April. Um, and I, I don't think Bellhaven Elementary was open then, but I'm not sure. Uh, but it, now, I mean, if the schools are, are all opening again, um, I just think uh, I, I would love to see um, data on these new bridge intersections during times when kids are coming to and from school. Um, and that would be, you know, in the morning, but then not necessarily peak congestion hour for cars. It would be a little earlier, probably. I know that's asking a lot, but I think if we're going to spend a lot on an installation, like it just, it would be nice to see how, like what the pedestrian movements are like during those times of day. Um, and, and actually, if it's useful, I can volunteer to go out and do some of that counting. I don't, it doesn't have to be like staff, <laughs> um, but, but I just, I just think that's an important data point to consider. Yeah. Yeah. Point taken. We'll, we'll see what we can do. And, and certainly no need, no need for commissioners to go out there with, 
we, we have contractors, I think, for the job. All right. Thank you, um, uh, Commissioner Cole. Yeah, I had two comments. Um, thanks for putting this slide back up again. Uh, the first one is my understanding is that this motion with regard to the bulk balcony was starting to move toward um, proceeding with permanent installation only on the side streets and not on Newbridge. Is that correct? Is that what was on the table? Or is on the table? Right, that's, that's what I'm hearing so far. Um, okay, okay. Yeah. So, so second thing is, I think Commissioner Lee has a good point about the um, bulb outs and bikes. Um, and I know that it's, we want to kind of get things over the finish line, but I think it's, I would suggest writing into the motion that we are going to relook at before permanent installation on the side streets. We're going to relook at the design here because we've been. Their conversation with her was about whether it could be moved out onto the white line, but it wasn't necessarily about could we be using different um, bulb outs. You know what I mean? Maybe there's some that aren't that wide in diameter, um, and so in addition to being moved out a couple inches, they also just could provide more space for bikes. I think that's a perfectly reasonable um, call out about bicyclists. And also bicyclist safety, um, you know, if they happen to navigate these bulb outs. Um, and I think we should take the time to, and maybe write to the motion that we should look into the design and make sure it's bicyclist friendly. That's my comment. Um, so that uh, sounds reasonable and we didn't quite have a a, a a motion yet but i can i can summarize it into a motion when we get there with one last comment from commissioner Siebert. um it's mostly a continuation on what other people have already um we're i'm sure getting right into kevin's job about rethinking these bollards for him so that engineering from the commission thing i hear you and and i'm just thinking like why can't the paint be green I mean, if we want bikes to go there, the rest of the city has green paint where we think bikes should go as they approach intersections. So that's just another thought about helping the bikes know that they should go there. And I totally agree with Lydia that if it's not about putting the shape of the curb and it is sort of like the protection of the pedestrians, that that third, like, why can't we just take out that third bollard closest to us and then just have the two at the actual corner? And that and with some green paint anyway those so i guess what i would say is we think that we need more study about the bollards on newbridge before we put any permanent installations in and that we think we can rethink it or we think you can rethink it and then we'll give you feedback okay right. um great so let me um uh, if you show back uh kevin if you show back the staff report um let me uh, uh, uh turn that into a motion and see whether we have something that has support. Um, so we'd like to make a motion um, a, 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 assuming that, um, let's uh, 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 give, give these things imaginary numbers. And I'd like to make a motion um, incorporating items number one, three, and four from the staff report um, with the addition of exploring the gravel path on Ivy Drive. And then with number three um, to uh, refrain from permanent bulb outs on Newbridge and uh, have staff consider uh, temporary install installation with the same goals of slowing car speed and improving pedestrian safety while not impeding cycle travel. Um, and uh, with regard to the side streets, um, pursue a permanent installation of bulb outs but um, having staff consider designs that do a better job of accommodating cyclists. Um, uh, do I have a second on that? I'll second. Okay. Any comments from commissioners on that as motion?
um, and, and uh, actually before going to commission, want to check with staff and, and, and Kevin, does that sound like a feasible motion that it sounds like reasonable to staff? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. I think the, it's, it's clear that with regard to Newbridge that we definitely want to at least keep the temporary status until we can further explore uh, some of the alternatives. Um, and, and with regard to the alternatives, obviously the, the full hot versus bike safety. I think the one the one thing that we'll probably have to explore a little bit more is um, when it comes to sort of the permanent installation, um, which, which aspect do we go towards? Because um, that much is clear. If we put in the bulb out, obviously it's going to be a, a inconvenience for the for the bikers or or, or not as ideal for the bikers. Um, but then for the pedestrian, it, it is a benefit there. So I, I think so far the, the direction is clear. I, I think the one thing that most likely staff will need to take a take another closer look at is sort of uh, for when, when it comes time to the permanent installation, um, you know, what, what happens then? I, I think right now we, there's like uh, Vice Chair Cole mentioned, maybe we can get some of the skinnier ball, ballers to kind of create that spacing. And that's that's a, that's a really good idea right there uh, for for the temporary, but I think when it comes to the permanent, I think we're still um, we, we're going to need to um, probably spend a little bit more time thinking about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Uh, th uh, thank you, uh, Commissioner Lee. Yeah, I was just I was responding to the very end where we where we talked we you got into the sort of the permanent installation and and making them bike friendly, and so that was the part where I was like, oh, okay, is that is that since we've only had two options for permanent bulb outs presented to us, you know, the full, the like extension, and then the like the drainage one that really, I, we don't really know what the advantages or disadvantages of either of them are. We know that neither of them accommodate bicyclists. So um, assuming that Kevin is like happy with, with us saying that, I'm, I'm, I just wanted to, to make sure that, that we sort of, I mean, you basically flagged it already. So, yeah, yeah. I think for the side street, that, that, that's a really good point, and thank you for bringing that up. I think for the side street, um, because we don't have we don't have a this a similar issue with Newbridge. I, I think moving on with the permanent installation, um, it, it's it's probably going to be uh, it sounds like a, a a good solution at this point or a good step moving forward. So uh, we'll then kind of put our focus on on Newbridge, but but yes, um, recognizing that if we do. If, we're moving forward with permanent for the side street, and therefore, um, you know, it's it's not going to be that big of a bicycle benefit as we would see with the new bridge because we still have the, the temporary basis out there. Right. So essentially, for the the permanent ones on the side streets, we're there. There's not really a way to make those bike friendly. Is that what I'm hearing? That Right. That's okay. So then we shouldn't tack it on because it's adding, it's asking you to do something that you're not really capable of. Yes, I would appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. So anyway. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so is that a friendly uh, amendment about um, like not trying to make the side street treatments more bike friendly because it's not possible? It, Lydia, were you making that as a friendly amendment? Yeah, I'd like to just see us focus on Newbridge. I think that that asking staff to do additional work on thinking about those side streets, it, it just doesn't seem like, I mean, I feel like if they if they had come, if they had found something, they would have presented to us. Is that right, Kevin? Right, yeah, yeah. Generally, when it comes to bulb outs, um, unfortunately, it, it does serve a particular audience um, and, and the bicyclists. Um, it, it, typically, we don't, we don't, we wouldn't recommend bulb out if there's already a bike out there. That's good. Mm -hmm. so, Kevin, I'm sorry. The last couple of sentences you kind of mumbled that I couldn't hear what you oh, said. Um, my apologies. Yeah. Uh, typically, we wouldn't recommend bulb out installation if there's already a bike lane on site, or if we know that in the future we're going to put a bike lane, here. because the bulb out directly conflicts with the bike lane for the reason that we've been we've been stating. So, so in this case, yeah, what the, you're the, saying that people aren't expected to bike in the shaded area that the bulb outs are in? That's, that's correct, yes. <laughs> the bulb outs serve as a no bike zone and so the people have to bike around the bulb outs? Right, because the bulb out is essentially a concrete area with a, with a curb. So the, the bike lanes will not be able to get on there. So the, I, I think to the point that 
uh, basically Commissioner Lee was saying, with, with Newbridge, we can still explore that a little bit more because it's temporary. So there's actually open spaces. Uh, but with the uh, side streets, if we put in a bulb out, it's, it's essentially a, a concrete curve that's you know either four inch high or six inch high. So uh, and it has to be. It has to be a concrete curve. It doesn't have to be a concrete curve, but uh, well, if it's a permanent feature, then it's a concrete curve. Um, we we can certainly keep it as a temporary and just use the bulb out and paint. But those are those are not what we would consider to be permanent features. Because the essence of a bulb out is to reduce the crossing distance and not allowing the cars to be able to drive over it. So the essence of a bulb out is to reduce the crossing distance. So that means no one else can get over it besides a pedestrian. So I guess the question on the table then is, are the concerns about the bike unfriendliness of the permanent bulb outs, does that outweigh making them permanent? Right. Um, so and I think the uh, sorry. So the sense of the commission to date, um, with the motion on the table, has been that the main road here that we're concerned about keeping options open for bike safety as an important route is Newbridge, and the commission to date hasn't been as concerned with the side streets um, for. Uh, you know, a, a bicyclist because they're, you know, lower trafficked and less risk to cyclists and less cycle heavy anyway. So that is the, what the current motion does. Okay. Um, so I see that Commissioner Altman has a hand. What's the compelling evidence that these bulb outs reduce throughput? Um, I, I would say at this moment in time, we don't have the data to support it. Um, so why is it? Yeah, okay. So there's okay. no data that, that I, and the, the people that live there are ambivalent about it based on the survey. Right. Um, how would bulb outs on a side street reduce throughput? That doesn't make sense to me anyway. Um, so if the objective of this is to reduce throughput, right, through traffic, what's the compelling argument for any bulb outs? Right. So right now, the, the bulb outs, I, I would consider them to be more of a, uh, a safety improvement. So, so, yeah. and, yeah. No problem with safety. Yeah. I, I'm just trying to um, link this to the objective of the study, though. Right. And, and I would say the conclusion of that study is that uh, at least as we currently have with all the data that we have right now and the survey results that we are, we are seeing is that those bulb outs are not creating at least the throughput reduction or, well, not the throughput reduction, the, the speed reduction that we had hoped for. Yeah, uh, yeah we, we, can't say that, right, yeah. we can't say that about the throughput yet just because of the nature of the- uh, And on the other hand, it may actually incre increase risk of safety risk to at least bicycles. The, the, exactly, that's the uh, that's the sort of the arg not the argument, but that's the, the point that the commission is making right now relative to new bridge. Um, okay, I'm seeing several hands continuing to be raised. Are any of them legacy hands, or are them, or are they? Uh, hands that are have additional comments on the motion in front of us, Commissioner Baruzzi. Um, I, I guess I wanted to speak to uh, Commissioner Altman's questions. Um, is I, I agree, those were the points I was raising earlier. I will say that on a street that has a lot of on-street parking, which a lot of those side streets do, there's a pretty solid case for having a pedestrian bulb out because it's harder to see the pedestrians when they're parked cars um, and they're trying to cross the street. Um, and so I get that, you know, like it doesn't, doesn't do anything for the throughput, which is the goal of the study. Um, it probably does make it a little safer for pedestrians that are trying to cross the street. And it doesn't really affect cyclists by the same token because they're already out in the middle of the lane because the parked cars. So if you're a bike and you're already out in the middle of the lane anyway, you're taking the lane, like you're, you know, you're not, you're, you're not gonna be as bothered by a bulb out. Um, but I think on Newbridge, the concern is that 
you're not necessarily out in the lane because there are a lot of cars using that. And so then you have to move into the lane to get around the bulb out. And um, that's one of the reasons I was asking Kevin about the data for the pedestrians that are actually crossing Newbridge because until we see data that says that pedestrians are definitely crossing Newbridge um, at a volume great enough to suggest that that's the overriding concern, I, I, I agree with you. Like it's not, it's not achieving um, the throughput goal and I, I'm very concerned about, um, I've heard so many different people talking about the bike problem now. Um, so. Mm -hmm. um, do I, I so I'm, I'm hearing some concerns here. Um, does anybody want to bring forward any amendments? Um, you know, not just uh, comments, because right now the motion is calling to uh, keep the bulb outs on the side streets. All right, I am not. Okay, uh, uh, Commissioner Lee. Can you just read out the, the critical part of what we're proposing? The number two with the temporary bulb out. I think I'm, I'm just losing track here. It's getting late, so I'm like, uh, losing track of the, the thread. So can you just read it out? Um, yeah, the, 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 the two is to not do any permanent installation on new bridge and have staff work on alternative designs to achieve the goals of slowing cars, improving safety for pedestrians and accommodating cyclists. Okay. And okay. Um, on the side streets, continue making the bulb outs permanent. And, and okay. that is what we cur currently have before us, um, you, know, uh, you know, without any other uh, amendments. Got it. Thank you so much. Okay, great. So I believe I have a motion by the chair and the second. Apologies, let me get the notes real quick. Um, a second by uh, Commissioner Sibrian. So uh, if I can, hopefully everyone's clear on the motion. So if you, your vote for this is uh, affirmative, if you can raise your hand. Uh, and hold it for a couple of seconds, that would be great. Either your virtual hand or your physical hand. I can see both hands, okay. So I, I, I'm seeing hands from everybody, so a unanimous vote. So great, thank you very much for, for that. Um, I appreciate it. So Chair, I uh, will return it back to you for. All right, well, thanks for everybody for uh, 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 grappling with these, um, you know, multi-dimensional issues in terms of uh, traffic calming in Belhaven. And we are only advisors to city council. So everything, including residents with comments or um, can, uh, will uh, come back to city council for the final decision. Um, moving on in the agenda, um, is to evaluate commission subcommittee to support city council priorities. And um, like uh, while it is getting late, I think that um, staff wanted to bring this to council in September. So um, uh, barring mass protest, we'll try and power through. Um, let's see. Um, so for which we have a presentation from Kevin Chen, the senior transportation engineer to introduce the item. Great, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so I will go ahead and my apologies on to make sure I'm sharing the right screen. I think that's my primary screen here. Let's see. Okay, and I will uh, keep this brief. So uh, tonight's item really is to seek the commission's uh, recommendation to move forward with the 2021-2022 work plan. So uh, for the sake of brevity, I will go ahead and um, try to 
go through the slides as fast as I can uh, without sacrificing too much of the information. So here is the agenda for today. I'm going to briefly talk about what the work plan is for, uh, and then also finally conclude with some of the requests that we have heard from the city council and the multimodal subcommittee. And I'll try to um, use most of my time to explain those. So uh, as I mentioned it previously, the objective of our work plan is really for the commission to develop uh, essentially a, uh, a goal, a set of goals that to support the city council on an annual basis. And with the commission, we do have a, um, a, a very clear goal. Uh, the commission, the district commission shall advise the city council on realizing the city's adopted goals for complete street vision zero climate action plans and provide input on major land use and development projects. So as you know, that those are um, some of the major components that are currently in our work plan. Uh, the process of a work plan, it's, uh, it's an annual work plan that we typically develop uh, around this time of the year. And we would then kind of go, go to the commission, to the city council by September for adoption and then a quarterly report out um, within the year. So typically, Two, two or three times, depending on the, the progress that we made. So our last work plan was actually approved and adopted in March because of the, the COVID-19. So it's actually not that long ago that we adopted our work plan. However, since then, there have been a couple new additional requests coming from a couple, couple of uh, parties. So I. I isolated them and uh, showcased them here on this slide, which then later on will get incorporated into the revised work plan. So the first request came from the city council and this came from when they had their the budget discussion. Primarily, there are two elements being uh, requested from, from, the, from the city council for, for, the, for the commission's um, direction. One is to evaluate the current state of the safeguard to school program. As, as some of you know, the, the Safe Art to School folk program was one of the items that got full funding from the city council. So one of the one of the requests from the city council is to evaluate that and see if there are any additional uh, changes that we want to make. The second one is the, the process and procedure of the neighborhood traffic management program. Um, and again, I think we have a couple of conversations about that process itself and sort of the uh, the, the labor intensive nature of it being more um, community uh, oriented, community outreach oriented. And so therefore, the, and there has been some expression from uh, one or two commissioners that, that wanted to maybe explore this a little bit more. So that was something that we got a direction from the city council. If the, if the commission wants to pick this up, we certainly would be able to. And then also we received a request from the multimodal subcommittee, which uh, the chair provided a presentation at the last meeting. Essentially two actionable items from, from the request. The first was to sign the seamless transit principles resolution. Uh, this is the, by signing the resolution, what it means is that the city would like to uh, support those ideas and those ideas are essentially from the, what, what was identified in the resolution. So hopefully you had a chance to, to look at it. Those are, are generally very high level conversations. Um, so by signing, signing the resolution, it doesn't really put the city, uh, other than being a supportive uh, partner to the idea, it doesn't really put any um, strain on, on us in, in terms of the staff resources or just resources as a whole. The second request is to allocate some resources to assist the subcommittee to review future transit recommendations. And uh, I know at the last meeting we had talked about what that means exactly. So I'm going to spend a couple of minutes uh, just kind of explaining what the, the actual request is about. So in this case, what the subcommittee's request is to um, essentially allocate uh, some, some staff time to review the documentation. So typically when you have a documentation, there are some recommendations associated with that, you know, what, whatever the recommendation could be. It could be high level, it could be more minute uh, and, and more detail oriented. But in this case, the request is for staff to help the subcommittee review those recommendations and then come back to the commission and ultimately to the city council with some sort of an actionable plan. So I, I do want to kind of make, make that clear. 
the second item is not necessarily asking staff to go out and do all the recommendations. It is a request to help the subcommittee look at those recommendations and come up with an actionable plan. So, so what that means is then we will most likely, uh, if the city council is agreeable to, to this particular request, there'll be some, some staff resources allocated. And of course, depending on the length of the document, it could be a couple hours, it could be four hours. You know, it, it really depends on how long the document is and also try to come up with some sort of an actionable list, which um, you know, typically it doesn't require days or weeks, but, but it does require some thought because we want to make sure that we are uh, true to, to what our resources can, can handle at this moment in time. So hopefully I was, um, hopefully that, that, that made that clear to, to what, the, um, what the request is about. And, and I, I will say those two are, they could be independent from each other. Uh, approving one doesn't necessarily mean the other has to be uh, has to be um, be approved as well. So, for instance, if you know the com commission can approve the first one uh, and not the second one, um, if so desired. So, what that means to the work plan itself? Uh, so, this page and the next page are are essentially the essence, the entirety of the work plan. The red text are staff's recommendation for uh, what would be add, uh, added to the work plan as a result of those requests. So in this case, uh, for the second bullet item here, advice city council on the implementation of the TMP, staff is recommending that verbiage to evaluate the current NTMP process and is part of the TMP project number 165. Uh, and here are the remaining three actionable uh, work plan items. As you can see, the second bullet uh, is referring to the safe route to school program. So that's the verbiage that staff is recommending. And then the third bullet is uh, what staff is recommending in, for the multimodal subcommittee's request. And they are separated by, by those two actionable items. Uh, I'll definitely make sure to go back to those slides uh, when we're open to it for discussion. So for tonight's action, uh, staff is requesting that the, the commission look at the, uh, the verbiage that is being presented in front of you. Uh, there's two things that we're looking for. One is just a confirmation that the overall work plan is still a good one. And then the second item is whether or not we want to include those new tasks. So essentially the red text is what I'm referring to. Uh, and then also just basing, based on the conversation that we're going to have tonight, hopefully, will come to a, uh, a conclusion to the revised work plan and then also designate someone to present this to the city council in September. Uh, typically when the commission presents the work plan to the council, there is generally a designee from the commission that talks about the work plan, some of the ideas that are, that are being, um, being asked for. So in this case, we definitely would need someone to kind of explain uh, what that subcommittee uh, Multimodal subcommittee is requesting. So that's definitely a key element here as well. Uh, so, with tonight's, basically tonight's action, the next steps are essentially asking uh, the st staff will be working with that designee, uh, whoever it might be, uh, to talk about the logistics and ultimately going to the city council for adoption. So, that's my presentation tonight. I am going to go ahead and now go to. Um, work plan recommendations, and then uh, I'll conclude my presentation. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. And so there, there's some members of the public that have been here for a while. So I want to uh, give people a chance to uh, make it, uh, any comments that they may have. And um, we'll do the same thing that I, I that from from before in case people have a different a uh, comment, you know, one person is not going to make multiple comments, but if somebody has a, a different person has a comment um, after we talk for a while, I'll, I'll, I'll open it up, up again. Um, so I see two hands and one, I see one hand from council member Taylor, who is um, for the new commissioners who may not know is the city council uh, liaison to our commission and in general, commissions have liaisons that are assigned 
uh, to them to be the connection between the commission and the council and uh, you know, may at times have a little guidance from us about what the council is uh, wanting for, from us in, in some of the items um, that we are charged to support them in. So I'll start with council member Taylor. Thank you, Chair Levin, and good evening, commissioners, and thank you so much for your service. And most importantly, this evening, the fruitful discussion about the traffic calming um, for the Bellhaven neighborhood. Um, I am Cecilia Taylor, and I wanted to speak on the topic of the revised work plan. Um, I sit on a few of the regional boards, and for me, um, what is helpful is to have a a baseline um, going into discussion, especially the first year of being on a board. And when I saw the seamless transit principles, um, I thought that this would be um, a great way to start a discussion um, with the council and hopefully get support um, because going into conversations on a regional board, it's nice to know um, when you before you get to the meeting that there is a bench park for Menlo Park. Um, and considering we're encouraging folks to walk and take transit and to bike, I think it would be great if the council could adopt the seamless transit principles um, as a baseline for what we wanna see in our city. So I'm actually hoping that this doesn't necessarily have to be on the work plan, um, that maybe you could do something else if I take this directly to the council to get support. Our neighboring cities, East Palo Alto, Redwood City, Fremont, and I believe Milbrae have already adopted it. And they've already used actually the template that's been provided. Um, so that is my public comment, and I'm hoping that I can get support from the council so that this isn't um, requiring any staff time and most importantly time from our commissioners, considering your work plan is already pretty um, full. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Councilmember Taylor and uh, Commissioner Hor or uh, uh, sorry, uh, 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 Rachel Horst. Next public comment. Thank you. Um, gosh, that public comment may have just obviated my public comment, but I'm going to put a plug in anyway. I was also going to speak to the seamless transit principles item, and I'm very glad to hear Council Member Taylor bring it up as well. Um, but just for the record, I also would greatly support Menlo Park uh, adopting these, these transit principles. And I say that um, as someone who's very involved in housing, I, I am a housing commissioner in the city. I'm also by day a housing staff member, including in a city that has adopted these principles in the city of East Palo Alto. But of course, I'm speaking as, my, as myself. I just realized that our system doesn't quite work for the end user. I don't know if it works for any user in between. Um, and having experienced good transit in the past, one of the things that's really important is predictability of fares, of the cards or the passes that you'll need to use, especially when you know you need to switch modes. So I really see this as Menlo Park joining that chorus and kind of pointing our collective compass in the right direction. And as a single jurisdiction, this is something we really have to do because it is a regional solution, but it relies on the collective to get there. Uh, and so all we're saying is, look, we're going to work out all the other things among the transit agencies, the different funding and governance structures. But at the end of the day, it only matters if people can get from point A to point B in, in a viable way. And as a housing advocate, I think this is really key. I can't really encourage more housing, advocate for more housing, and then point to a fractured um, transportation infrastructure. Uh, so... These are really bedrock principles and I hope that the council takes it up, but just in case it doesn't go that route, I certainly encouraged uh, this commission to consider them and, and to um, discuss them if needed, but they have my full support. Thank you. Great, uh, uh, thank you very much, Rachel. Um, and it, uh, if, if anybody else has a comment after we're done discussing, I'll, I'll, I'll open it up for a, additional people if anybody else has a different idea. Um, so I wanna, before we start discussing, I have a clarifying question for staff, um, which if uh, council member Taylor uh, uh, did uh, bring the principles to council, which 
in other cities that adopted them, um, like Fremont went to their commission first, and East Palo Alto just went to the city council on consent. Uh, San Mateo, I think it went to council on, on, on you know, directly. So um, if the council brought it forward directly, would it be redundant for us to take this action now or would it be complementary in some way? Can, can, can staff explain uh, how those things might fit together? Yeah, definitely. And thank you very much for that question. I, I will say that um, if, if you let me, allow me to kind of separate the two. Um, I, I would say in terms of the, the resolution itself, absolutely. Uh, because at the end of the day, the work plan is there to support the city council. So if council member Taylor wants to bring this item to the city council for support, it definitely uh, is a welcome idea and we would not need to include that in, in, the, uh, in our work plan. So that's for the first item. For the second item, I, I would say um, that uh, a staff recommendation is that if, if the if the council member Taylor is also intended to bring this particular and, and by this I mean the second bullet point to the city council for discussion, then I, I would certainly welcome that idea as well. I, I would, however, um, recommend that maybe we just keep it on on the work plan for now, just because we I, I think we should be because it, it the, there's additional resources that are being asked here. And so I, I would say for, for clarity and for transparency, I would definitely recommend that we can keep that item on there uh, until, we, um, until we have some sort of a, uh, a viable, um, viable answer from the city council on whether or not we wanna proceed with that. And then you know, if the answer is yes, we can remove it from our work plan anytime we want to, uh, but I would recommend that we keep the second goal for the time being. Mm -hmm. okay. uh uh, 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 thanks. And um, I, I want to uh, open it up to fellow commissioners for comment. But like I, I, I think I think as I, I, I shared last time um, for this commission that the reason why I brought it to the commission in the first place was that Councilmember Taylor um, at, like like asked about the item, and 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 I thought that it would be a good idea to have it come through the commission for like the good of the order. So. Um, uh, at any rate, but it, it, it started out with, with, a, with a council request. Um, so I uh, want to open this up to commissioners who have comments on any of the items in the work plan current and proposed. Can we maybe scroll through the slides? Absolutely. So I'm going to go ahead and so now you should be seeing the first of two slides. So this one, um, the only addition that staff is recommending is the uh, red text. All right, Commissioner Lee. Hi. Um, I, I think I am actually someone who brought up the NMTP and looking at it in the past. And now maybe I'm just looking at it with fresh eyes, but given everything else that is on our uh, list here, I kind of don't want the NMTP to be, you know, to suck all the life out of all the commissioners or even a portion of the commissioners, because <laughs> I know how um, how difficult that has been. And I know, I believe Adina and uh, at least you and, you know, other people who have been on the commission before have um, have, ran have wrestled with it. And uh, I, I don't want to like pass this buck on to somebody else, but maybe this is not the year. I think I'm, I'm just listening to, you know, the latest, um, uh, you know, the, the latest like climate change announcement. I mean, I just feel like there's there's bigger fish to fry right now and we should be concentrating on those bigger fish rather than trying to uh, worry about the NNTP at this point in time. So that's that's my feedback. Okay, um, thanks, Commissioner Bruzzi. Yeah, actually I, I, um, I so often agree with you, Commissioner Lee, but in this case, I, I really don't. Um, first of all, it's a request from the council. 
and we serve the council. So if the city council wants us to look at NTMP, I think it's that's that's what we should do. Um, but also, it's, it's one of those things where there's there's a huge backlog of projects right now, all of which potentially need to go through this gauntlet of you know 50 plus percent, 60 percent, whatever community support and tons of staff time. And I think part of the goal here, um, not to turn this into an agenda item, but part of the goal is to figure out how we can speed, uh, how we can make that go faster, right? There have been people who have been waiting for things for a couple of years now. Um, some of them are really small things like a speed feedback sign. Maybe we don't need to get every single resident on a Willow Road to say yes in order to have a speed feedback sign on Willow Road. So, so I think um, I mean, I've talked with a couple of different city council members about this, and I do think there's a lot of enthusiasm for us to, to give it a fresh look. Um, and so I would, I would really um, be grateful to have official sanction from the council to do that, as opposed to sort of, you know, being frustrated that it doesn't work as smoothly as it could, um, but not being able to change it or make, recommend changes. That's just me. All right, uh, Commissioner Sebring. Um, I also, I, I hear the concerns about having a net, just another extra thing on here. But also for the very same reason as we are trying to look at the Bellhaven traffic calming thing, which is a response to this process. And we are, and, and one of the issues is because of the pandemic, the traffic patterns aren't the same. And it's kind of harder to know whether the effect is right, whether we're achieving the effects we want. And that kind of makes me think that it's exactly the right time to kind of look at it. So that when traffic is back in full force and everybody really wants to use it, we will have gone through and figured out maybe what a way to make it streamlined. So the fact that maybe demand is a little bit lower now because of traffic feels like a good time to look into it when it's less sort of um, it's when it won't seem as much like we're targeting a particular thing. Um, Commissioner Cole. Yes, yeah, so just to listening to the comments about this, I'm curious whether this phrasing is exactly what we want to be doing, evaluating the current process and procedure. Is that the thing that we want to target to improve the effectiveness of the program? I just want to kind of kick the tires there and make sure that that's the goal, evaluating the process and procedure. Yeah, I, I, no, that's a, that's a really great question. And, and I think that's, uh, that's staff's recommendation because ultimately, and then this is just based on uh, kind of years of hearing uh, from, from both sides. I, I think the, the process and procedure would be the right thing because it has to do with, um, you know, in terms of the, the percentage necessary to move a project forward, which is uh, just in some people's eyes, a little bit high uh, and a little bit stringent. Uh, the amount of meetings associated with that, uh, that's another kind of a process, part of the process okay. of the meetings. And so I think this is a, uh, SEP is recommending that term. And I, we, we, I feel like this covers what, what we typically heard about the NTMP from both sides. Okay. Is it inefficiency? Exactly. Some, okay. uh, I, I would say, I would say exactly. Some people feel like it's too stringent, not efficient. And, and some other people think that it, it's right amount because it really, it's really community outreach heavy. Okay. All right. Um, do any other fellow commissioners have comments on this? I will have uh, at least one, but want to give all my fellow commissioners a chance to way in before I share thought. Um, Commissioner Holt Cole, is that a legacy hand or is that a, a, a new comment? Okay. Legacy. Um, all right. Um, uh, uh, Kevin, can you step over to the other page just for short-term memory sake? All right. So we've got the safe routes to school that some of us have already recommended. And we've got the seamless uh, transit principles that uh, had the council request. And if it is, um, it, it, if, if it winds up being redundant with what the council wants to do, then it seems to be doing no harm. Okay, so it sounds like the thing that I have a comment on is going back to the NTMP, um, where my question is that, um, 
in terms of the um the goals of the work plan and advising the council on the implementation of the TMP and then in particular um, uh, reviewing the TMP and recommending projects likely re to reduce vehicle miles traveled by providing safe and convenient alternatives to driving. Um, uh, what I, I, I want to get some staff guidance on whether we have the ability to keep these things from colliding with each other. Because I, I heard the first commissioner comment, which is that, like, we just got that IPTC, IP, the, the International Climate Report. And um, you know, doing that uh, VMT reduction, safe and convenient alternatives to driving, is really important for us as a community, and is like our contribution to the planet because it's the largest source of greenhouse gas emissions. So, I would, if, if we if we have to, if we have both of them on the work plan, I would want to see us to relatively prioritize those. NTMP or sorry those TMP projects that are providing the convenient and safe alternatives to 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 driving um, on the major corridors and you know like like also make progress on the NTMP but like not like not at the cost like if we had a plan that said well we want to consider the safety treatments on middle field but no, we can't do that because we need to consider the NTMP and traffic calming process. Mm -hmm. Then, like, I, I don't think that we are being guided right. So, I would love to hear some guidance on how we might be able to do those things, but where we would be able to prioritize that major safety and climate goal. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a that's a great question and um, sort of a, a, a really good assessment, if you will. So. I, the one thing I would say to that is, it, well, luckily, one of the things that we also got the uh, approval from the city council on is the expansion of the transportation team. So within the next couple of months or so, we're gonna, we, we will be able to have uh, two additional staff members to, uh, to the transportation team specifically. And part of, the, part of this NTMP process actually is hinge on that element meaning uh, even if it's on the work plan, the staff is not anticipating to, to you know, have this up and running right away. We, what we're anticipating is for the new members to come, to come in and get acclimated with um, the, the, the city, the process, and then at that time, evaluate some of the, um, the priorities that, that the city council have allocated to staff on. And that would then include, like you mentioned, all of the TMP, uh, projects that are related to climate action goals, um, and then also at the same time, an opportunity to look at the NTMP process and see how much effort that it's really going to take. So, um, as, as long answer short, I, I think that I definitely understand your concern and I share the same concern. And the answer to that would be, we'll, we'll have an opportunity in the next few months or so to kind of reevaluate the what we have in terms of our resources and to make sure that uh, we're not giving up one for the other. And, and by that time, we'll be able to come back to the commission with a, with a more clear idea. And, uh, but I, I hear, I, I think I hear what the chair is saying is that, you know, if we have to do one or the other, I think the chair at this, at this moment in time is geared more towards climate action related rather than the TMP, NTMP process itself. Yeah, and I have having like sat through the city council priority and budget discussions, I, I suspect that if this came for feedback from council, we would get that same feedback that I said about the relative priorities too, based on having listened to them. So um, thank you very much. I'm glad to hear that that staff is is thinking about planning things in an orderly fashion, um, uh, like with that that end in mind 
where like our climate goals and our safety goals really super dovetail because the high injury dov the high injury corridors are also the same places that are the opportunities to provide those safe and convenient alternatives to driving. So, um, all right. Um, do I, are, are there any other comments from commissioners or do we have any motions? Um, and I, we had taken uh, actually any final comments from commissioners before I open it up to any final public comments from people who have not commented today. All right, uh, Commissioner Cole. Yeah, I just, I think we were gonna just finish scrolling through them. We don't have to discuss it all, but just to make sure everyone has seen like page that one and okay, thank you. Okay. I am not seeing any hands. If you have not yet made a public comment and you have a public comment, uh, now is a chance to raise your hand and share that thought. Um, so coming back to the commission, does anyone have any motions? It's, it sounds like everyone's pretty, pretty well in agreement. So I can go ahead and make a, a motion move that we approve uh, the new uh, commission work plan proposed by staff. I will second that. Great, thank you very much. So I have a motion on the table by Commissioner Jensen and then a second by Peruzzi. So for those commissioners that would like to vote affirmative for, to this action, if you can raise your um, physical hand or your um, virtual hand, then I would appreciate that. So uh, sorry, if you can give me one second. I believe that's unanimous from everybody. Great, thank you very much. Woo -hoo. Um, uh, uh, that was uh, uh, well, well done with the benefit of, of having a lot of uh, prior consideration so that we had something that we could quickly agree on because we had thought about it and discussed it ahead of time, moving on to the agenda. Um, we have informational items with as item F that are transmitted to the commission in staff's effort to provide an update on that. Uh, excuse me, Chair. Sorry, uh, if you don't mind, we also have um, E4. It will be a relatively quick item. Uh, it's basically uh, officially assigning Commissioner King Oh, to okay. the safe route to school program subcommittee, and and that might be, that might be crucial because now we have, now that we have the uh, evaluation of the program, it might be a good idea to officially oh, have yeah. Commissioner King on the subcommittee. All right, all right. So, sorry for the premature scroll. Yes. Evaluate commission subcommittees to support city council priorities. Or Kevin Ten, chief senior transportation engineer, will introduce this item. Thank you very much. So yes, uh, as I mentioned before, this is uh, really kind of a housekeeping item. So if I can have a motion, well, actually, let me confirm with Commissioner King that she's still interested in joining the subcommittee, uh, knowing that Thank now there's you. an additional task to it. Uh, okay, great. So in that case, uh, so now uh, after this vote, our Safe Route to School subcommittee will have Commissioners Beruzzi, Sibrian, Lee, and then King. So if I can have a motion and a second, uh, that would be great. Uh, I'm, we need a motion, so to add her? Uh, yes, please. Okay, uh, I move to add um, to add Commissioner King to the Safe Routes to School Commission. Okay. Uh, uh, committee, is, sorry, subcommittee. Have, uh, Chair Cole, Vice Chair Cole. So if I can have uh, anyone that wants to vote affirmative, you can raise your physical or virtual hand. That's everybody. Great, awesome, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, and uh, uh, now moving on uh, to F, which is the informational items that are transmitted to the commission and staff's effort to provide an update on matters of importance to the commission. Informational items are not action items. However, commission, city staff member, or a member of the public 
may request to make a comment or ask a question on any of the informational items at, where we have an update on major project status. Um, uh, uh, does Kevin uh, Chen they, uh, have any uh, items to report to us? Yeah, just a quick update on the two projects that are coming up to the city council, the 15 miles per hour school zone, this is for CDY, is expected to go to the city council in August. Uh, the Transportation Management Association Feasibility Study is actually uh, going to go to the City Council in September now. So for those that are interested, uh, definitely want to keep an eye out for that. Uh, with that, I will conclude my uh, major project update. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Do we have any questions from members of the Commission or any public comments on that item? Are we have any uh, legacy hands, including uh, not including mine? I took mine down. Katie, is that a question? No. Okay. Uh, we are now moving on to the subcommittee reports. Um, uh, any updates from the climate? action plan subcommittee, which shouldn't meet, but individuals may have something to share. Uh, and from me, thanks. Okay. Yeah, the, the um, it's any, if anybody remembers what IPCC stands for, um, that would be welcome. But the International Commission on Climate had a report on uh, climate change, and there's a narrow window to make a dent. So let's get to it. <laughs> um, uh, downtown access and parking subcommittee. Any any update? Uh, G two, Altman, Brzee, and Cole. Okay, hearing none. Um, multimodal metrics subcommittee. Uh, Altman, Brzee, Levin. Any updates? Okay. Uh, uh, multimodal subcommittee. Um, I, so I, I, I'll, I'll share very briefly that um, right before this meeting, um, the AC Transit Board heard an update on Dumbarton Forward. Um, so Dumbarton Forward, as well as Baybridge Forward, are two programs that are being run out of MTC to improve uh, bus speeds on major corridors, including the Bay Bridge, which is not our world, and the Dumbarton Corridor, which is. And they went over several improvements to speed buses um, on the Dumbarton Corridor between um, 880 and 101, um, including a bus on uh, shoulder uh, one way, um, uh, improvement, which is expected to be implemented by 2023. So they had a deadline for that. And the MTC has a, a project on this and they now have a project page with timeline updates and contact information. So this no longer appears like a project of the CIA that has no uh, information that anybody can find, but there's a project page and it's possible to find information and they're doing presentations. So that was good. Um, and um, uh, uh, another thing that came up with that is that there was some interest from, there's improvements on the side of the corridor between um, 880 and the Union City BART, um, which is also a piece of traffic congestion that helps to make the buses unreliable. Um, fortunately, Union City and the city of Fremont are working on that and there was interest in incorporating that into the project. And that is what I have to report on that item under this uh, title. And I guess the other item to report is an update on the uh, FAIR study that is coming uh, be, uh, uh, forward regionally that um, you know, may come up as something to comment on under the seamless transit principles. And there is um, a few uh, quick updates, one on the process and the dates and the other one on the recommendations on the process and the dates, the final, the preliminary recommendations came out on August 2nd. The final recommendations are coming out on September the 10th. Um, 
the FAIR Integration Task Force, the regional body stewardizing, stewarding study, will uh, hear that on September 18th, and then may, then may make their decision on October the 18th. And there's recommendations, preliminary recommendations include things like free or reduced price transfers, go anywhere transit passes. So a transit pass that an employer or a housing development can use to provide access, not just to one agency at a time, but all the agencies. Um, and fair caps, like a day, week, or a month um, uh, price cap um, for all the agencies you can use. And um, th there's going to be different timelines. Some things can be rolled out sooner. Some things can be rolled out later. The details are going to be um, surfacing in September. So that is an update on that study, including some things that might be of interest and value to the city. Um, that's the end of my update unless anybody else has any questions about those things. Um, okay. Uh, next is G5 updates from Safe Routes to School Program Subcommittee for Ruzi, Cibrian, and Lee. Uh, I can jump in really quickly. Um, well, school's starting up for a lot of kids very soon, so that's important. Um, also, in terms of the city's um, safe routes to school task force, this is when the city's the safe routes to school coordinator kind of convenes people in the community and talk, tries to get a sense of like what's going on, what's important. Um, the next meeting is September 16th at 9 a.m. And it's a good chance, especially if we're tasked to evaluate what's going on for um, subcommittee members to go and uh, and listen in and make comments, et cetera. Um, and I think that's all I have. Anybody else have anything? No? I uh, wanted to welcome Commissioner King at uh, to our subcommittee too. Great, thanks. I have a question because I think somebody mentioned up at the beginning of the meeting that um, the bus school bus routes had resumed. And I know that there was some concern about the bus routes during Menlo Park. Does anybody know how that's going? Like did, did we get our buses back? Uh, I have not heard anything about that. Jackie, do you know? I know I passed out three different kinds of bus schedules at check-in yesterday for freshman parents. Awesome. So, um, and, uh, and they all said that they weren't quite, you know, that this wasn't a guarantee of where all the stops were. So I directed everybody to that 800 number and advise them that as always, as a citizen commission, we're always seeking feedback from people about how public transit is working in their town. So please give us feedback. <laughs> um, but I don't know, like all I know is they were passing out bus route forms for like, um, yeah. So I assume yeah. they're gonna start working back up again. I, I've only seen uh, tons of like COVID protocol information. I haven't seen anything about transportation, but I assume that, you know, that those that's that will be forthcoming if there's any major stuff going on that we need to know about. I'll, I'll keep my eye out for it. Um, great. Um, so moving on to G5 transportation master plan implementation subcommittee, which um, we did not meet, but I think Commissioner Baruzzi sent an email requesting a, a discussion, if I'm remembering right, I could be hallucinating. But if so, that would be really welcome to have, especially to include uh, new people on the substantive stuff in our TMP and what might be in the pipeline for implementation um, over the next one to three years. So um, anything else from G6? Okay, hearing none. Um, John Cromie is not here. So there are no, gonna be no updates on the zero commission subcommittee. Zero um, emissions from John Cromie. It never gets old. <laughs> Uh, okay, so 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 barring any more uh, puns, we shall move on to adjournment. Um, actually, and and um, actually, before we go, um, can uh, 
can, can, can staff explain what they found out from the city attorney and clerk and other institutional people about our ability to meet in a social format if we so choose? Uh, Kevin? Thank you, Madam Chair, for covering that up. Saves me to write an email. So yes, uh, I discussed this uh, with the city clerk and um, the city clerk informed us that it is okay for commissioners to have social gatherings um, as long as the, you guys don't discuss any uh, city business. So keep it, keep it a, um, a personal discussion and get to know each other, uh, but just don't discuss any city business and we'll be okay. Mm -hmm. So if people wanted to like get, gather under like a tree in Burgess Park or some other park, um, as long as we didn't discuss business, we could do so. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, thank you very much. And this meeting is adjourned uh, to the meeting next month. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Kevin.